All right, we're good. Be like, uh, busting with the boys. Bussin' with the boys. Bro. Black yeah. dress. We are with the tights underneath. It is episode 303, and you are watching Bussin' with the Boys. Round of applause for all the boys in the bus here right now. Got a very special guest in the back, but we will get to him in just a moment. We have to talk about our presenting sponsor, the number one sponsor. You said uh, HQ's down? HQ's down. So I just gotta, I'm gonna rip through this. In my mind, in my brain. Oh, you've no, got it right got, there. Got some ads. Do you want me to go ahead? Do you brother. mind? It's our listen, our commanding, unstoppable partner, the Chevy Silverado. Dude, presented by our good friends at Chevy Silverado. That's right. I got to read the dot. There's a reason why we've never done a tear talk for the best pickup trucks, and that's because busting with the boys, there's only one pickup truck, the Chevy Chevy Silverado. Why is that, you ask? Silverado is a partner, a partner you can depend on. We've all spent time driving and using the Silverado for all kinds of adventures and other shenanigans. Silverado was a partner with us in the spring tour, and they were on the fall tour, and we're going to pray to God they'll be again on the following spring tour. Silverado brings the grit to legendary grit, paired with a modern truck, tech inside and out, massive screens, up to eight cameras with 14 different views to help driving, towing, and parking all easier. We love the bold, blacked-out look of the new Silverado HD Trail Boss. There's a reason why uh, there's a reason Chevy is America's most awarded brand for new vehicle quality over the last three years. According to JD power, Will Compton got himself a Chevy ZR2. Oh they yeah. looks Blacked phenomenal head on to it. Toe. Head to toe. We're looking up for, uh, I just sent my dad a link for a Christmas gift for Rue and it's going to be like a, a Chevy Silverado. Really? Yeah. Like a little like remote control one that I can just kind of sit there and move on my own. Yeah. Sit in a chair. Yeah. Throwing a Lucy and just yeah, let your yeah, kid yeah. think they're Versus having a like time. teaching her how to do it yeah. all. Like I'm just going to, I'm just going to play myself. Yeah. Family yeah. bonding time. But yeah. really she, she thinks my, uh, dad and daughter are doing something. Really you're just relaxing. Yeah. And but it's going to be in a blacked out like ZR1 Chevy so, Silverado. So let's go. Rue gets Chevy Silverado. Thursday. I'll get you one too. I'll get you a little remote control. Yeah, we we'll get you. you get one for Jack. We we'll get one for Jack. <laughs> now the Chevy. Jack, uh, hey, that would be funny. Will Will Chevy has changed a little bit. There is now another baby car seat in there. Yes, let's go. Yes, there is. There is a father of two. Father of two. Officially. I walked. I walked in the doors five minutes before our pre-production meeting. I, you could Will smiles, dapping boys up, having great conversation. But you just get, get a couple layers between those eyes. You can see it already. Starting to seep in there a little bit. Starting to seep in Grumpy Will. Grumpy Gr Will is going to level up hang in the on, next six on, months, hang boys. On, hang on, hang on. Just saying it now. Just Grumpy say that. Will. Grumpy Will. Have I, have I given any tip on like Grumpy Will, fellas? You guys today? think so in the back? So. Yeah, thank no, 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 you. No, no, not today. Not today. Not today. I'm just saying it's coming. It's all good. Yeah, but it's not like, what do you mean? Like, Grumpy Will? What are <laughs> we talking about? You're here? right. There's no, there's nothing I could possibly say to have any sort of foundation on that everybody can watch on video this is what makes me grumpy right here it's, it's the boy <laughs> next to me <laughs> but yeah father of two bro i'll say this it's great to see you guys Ooh. it's great to see you guys had sherm and garrett they came over to watch uh the nebraska game at the house i was trying to get out of the house to watch the game but couldn't necessarily do that my wife who's been a superstar has been obviously you get uh you get the whole after giving birth and everything else we did a c-section she did c-section i didn't do shit um but she's been having some issues with the nerve and stuff like that so it's it's hard for her to be a little mobilized so your boy's been listen i've realized this about myself i'm a machine i'm a machine dude. okay i've been keeping some stats like the ma matter of fact i got some numbers right here i've heated up lunch four times I've heated up dinner eight times. I've made dinner twice. I've made lunch twice. I've made breakfast eight times. This is since coming home on Thursday. I just want the people to know. I just want them. Still got three workouts in. Got about three miles in yesterday. Diaper changes. I've done about 17 diaper changes. I've been able to take about seven personal shits. Um, let's see here. Coffee consumed 51 cups. 
Oh and then a God. stat that I just kind of made up, but I think it's important. I think a lot of the dads, I think a lot of, I think a lot of guys out there understand this, but the stat is called, can you get me this? Um, 87 times. So in, just in five days. Yeah. In five hey, days. And a quick, yeah, hey, you know. do you mind stat? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's honey, a do you, honey mind. do you mind? Can you give me this? Yeah. Got you, sweetheart. God. Got you. Got you. Underrated stat you just brought to the table that I think a lot of men are thinking themselves right now. Holy shit. I got to keep yeah. track of that. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, I do that literally. It's go out funny. get her her favorite latte. Like, listen, mm, yeah. put Rue down for bed. Like, doing all this stuff. Nap times. Because she can't lift. You know what I mean? Yeah. She can't, like, lift. She can't drive. So your boy, I'm just, we're on it. Yeah. We're in operation. So it's good to see you guys is what all I'm trying to say. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, until Sunday, it was a brutal weekend um, on DraftKings for me. I mean, I'm losing money left and right. Yeah. I am. I was the prototype for marketing when it came to the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. I fell for that 11 you, times. I think 10. you fell for it for good reason. If you, you get caught up in the nostalgia of Mike Tyson and yeah. you're just like, man, what if? What if he just knocks this motherfucker out, dude? And heads off to Jake Paul. Again, marketing, like maybe the best of our generation. Probably. That's without thinking about it a little, uh, too much, but maybe yeah. the best of our generation. I mean, you got Dave Portnoy, Dana White, Jake Paul. What do you think about yeah, marketing yeah. marketing and getting people to go and put their eyes on the product you've produced? But not only that, like Jake has done it for such a long time. Uh, maybe before Vine, but I'm remembering him on Vine. He was on Disney Channel. Disney Channel. He's on YouTube where he makes a YouTube video every day, but he's been such a young hustler for as long as I can remember, starting from Vine. And it's like, he's been able to not only create content, market, make products, sell product, but to get into the world of becoming a boxer, an athlete, somebody that whether or not he's boxed the pros, the best, of the best, like he's still in the one percentile of like becoming an athlete mm -hmm. and to put his head down and do that and make a name for himself there, create his own promotion from it is insane, bro. Wild. Dude. <clears throat> he's yeah, bro, bro. He is big. He and, and legit like Jake Paul and even Logan Paul too are like the friends and every group in high school that was like kind of just good at everything. And they just decided, oh, we're just going to keep doing the things we're good at. And they, yeah. they just continue the production part of it. Because like, if it was me and I'm like watching, like, no, I didn't like the, the rolling out in the car. I love the fact that it was a Chevy. Yeah, He's wearing a million dollar outfit. That has to be said on the Netflix production because he, ha he had to make sure that, hey, everyone, make sure everyone knows I'm wearing a million dollars walking out of here. Like all that stuff for me, it's not, it's not for me, but it allows everyone watching it, whether you like it or don't like it to like have a, to want to put your eyes on it for him to either lose or you love him and you want him to win. Mm -hmm. And people, the boxers get so mad, like real boxers. I put that in quotations, like real boxers. Like, well, he's not a real boxer. It's like, he is getting 60 million people to watch him fight. That's as real as it gets. Yeah. But if you're a pro boxer, I'd be mad too. I, I'd be the same. I, you'd be the, salty. The chaos of it all. I get it all. And it's, it's amazing to see. Cause I want him to fight a real boxer and mm. get knocked out. You know what I mean? But he controls, he's been, he's, he's able to control all of it and yes. leverage all of these different things. And it's fascinating to watch. It truly is. He understands how to troll. He, he, he gets all of it, bro. He gets it all. He this understands. is the, the craziest stat. It was so 6.6 .6 million people were watching Antonio Brown's live stream of the video board in Dallas. And that is this so Jake Paul tweeted, more people watched an illegal stream of my fight with Mike Tyson than what the NBA playoffs averaged in 2024. That is uh, that's fucking nuts, wild. Man. Nuts. That's wild. And he's 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 great at trolling. Cause yeah, it's like if he fought a real fighter, like I want to say a champion called him out, right? Some champion, I think, was like calling him out yeah, or something he's like, like that. Right, and he's he, got like a crazy amount of knockouts, like twenty-seven wins and twenty-four knockouts. I saw, I saw something like that. And yeah. he controls it by saying, "Like I run this sport, and he, it's beautiful. It is, and I want him to get knocked out. It's beautiful. Yeah, and also, hey, Mike Tyson, it was, it was heartbreaking to see, and, and it's, it's not that heartbreaking because if you really think about it, a fifty-eight-year-old man got into a ring and threw punches with a guy for eight rounds of two minutes each <laughs> yeah. like if, actually if you took any other 58 year old guy that's an impressive feat that's awesome didn't take a whole lot of punishment good on jake paul for understanding towards the end of that fight that it was over he's gonna he they took if he started wailing on mike i think it turns into a way more of a shit show for jake but he ended up like, i disagree he, i think i think he stays away because if he starts to swing on mike that's ultimately that's the only opportunity mike's gonna have is to come up and hit him 
No, but I'm saying at the end, when they're, when, like it's obviously over. And Jake's kind of just like tapping him a little bit. Like we're going to get to the end of this like seventh and eighth round. Like let's just, it's, we know it's done. Mike's, Mike's no longer trying anymore. Yeah, Jake but, starts cause, bowing to him cause, cause and Mike, Mike puts his hands down and goes to put his glove out to shake his hand. Cause like, Mike obviously Mike just did it for money. Mike couldn't hit him. Mike couldn't hit him. Yeah. So if you start to smother him or get close to him, that's the only opportunity Mike would have had. Like I was hoping Jake would press him because that was Mike's only shot. Cause he's playing with him from the outside. Mike just couldn't. They were talking about it during the thing with Roy Jones Jr. and the commentator outside of him chewing on his mouthpiece the whole time, but he just didn't have the legs to like, explode this is gonna sound weird explode inside yeah like get inside yeah. and throw some hooks like do what mike tyson does I he just it. doesn't have that i get it i mean they, at the end of the day they both won like jake paul won his fight they had a, a whole bunch of views mike tyson got paid a big loser it seems like was netflix netflix maybe got, yeah they can turn it around now like they, they got the crit the games on christmas like yeah that was a shit show it was but it was a good test it was a good test for them now, obviously right, a lot of people out, coming in better from it the Wi-Fi just wasn't working great, which is funny too, because uh, JP and I, we were watching the fight together in my hotel room and we had one moment where it was like doing a little spinning circle of death. But other than that, we're just looking at Twitter and people getting, getting mad on Twitter, but we had no problem at all. Bro, it was will. pausing. Yeah, we, really it was just Will calling Netflix gay. <laughs> it was pausing so many times. I, actually, I saw comments being like, hey, you watch it on your phone. So I pulled it up on my phone. My phone was smooth. Yeah. But it's one of those things. Everybody was shitting on Netflix. It's talked about so much that the next time I have it, because it's going to be on Christmas Day, they're going to get a new shot, another shot at doing it. But everybody wins in that whole thing. I remember when it got announced and they're at the top and it was like a helicopter came down. I think the way they announced the fight and I was kind of like, I mean, this is fucking stupid. They, I'm not watching this shit. Mm -hmm. And then a few days out, bro, especially when Mike slapped him. We played our day around it. We there was, our a, day around there it was a millisecond that Jake, he buckled for a second. He's just able to stand up and then it, it all came to him. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you see him with the slap when he stepped on his toe? Yeah, bro. You think Jake was wobbly over that slap? I, not wobbly. I think he got buckled for a millisecond, bro. Like, and was just able to stand there. I think either way, he slapped him and I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. shit. Turned his head and everything else. In that moment, I went on a YouTube, watched some old Mike Tyson it. footage and I'm like, he Mike can do, can do this. But Mike can do did this you, thing. Did you put on the Roy Jones Jr. fight from two years ago? <sighs> can't do that no, i watched yeah, that fight you watch, i watched that fight yeah you watch but if you watch that you're like obviously two years later mike is not gonna all of a sudden be wildly improved from that I, when you watch his training when you watch his training <laughs> i was like yeah. maybe he's got it yeah little. but you could easily because like, the, you, the, the the roy one that was that was, i mean this one's a money grab too but him and roy were just putting on a show like mike's been in the dark yeah i'm thinking he's been in the dark for six to eight months and just maybe grinding. he just got that killer like i need chaos yeah it sucked he did a, hey listen and my, we I found out through this process we kind of knew this but Mike Tyson might be the goat of quotes cuz you go down the rabbit hole of him talking about walking to the ring how he's terrified then all of a sudden he's a god yeah. that little 14 year old kid asked him a question hey what's your legacy like and he's like legacy is just a word <laughs> like talking to a child saying when you die <laughs> that's fucking it and nothing else happens here's like and she's kind of standing there like nodding her she's, head oh she she literally goes oh no one's ever given me that answer before thank you like handle it like a pro whoever that girl is she's going to be the most electric reporter someday yeah. she handled that like an absolute pro but this dude just speaks like he just speaks and he says these he like says things and you're like what is mike tyson saying and then all of a sudden he just takes a golden nugget out of his back pocket and hands it to you and you're like i'm taking this the rest yeah. of my life I'm going to fuck you till you life. love me. <laughs> yeah. Pause. Pussy. <laughs> yeah. The biggest Dude. loser of the night might have been Sherm. Yeah. Fuck you, Sherm. What, what, what was the deal? Oh, what was shit. going on? What happened with Sherm? What? what? what are oh, we talking yeah, about? yeah, 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 Sherm. That was fucking wild. Oh, like, you're talking about him trolling. Like, <laughs> Sherm, why, I I, I, why did you do that? You know, I was bored. My wife was asleep. So hang on for, for perspective for everybody listening. Sherm on Friday, since Netflix was having such a problem, the the women's fight was still happening. And Sherm's tweeting like Mike Tyson and Jake Paul are fighting. He's like, oh, it was a tough round one. He hit him a little. He clipped him a little bit. Here's what they're saying in the corner. He's tweeting like the fight is actually going on and pissing people off. And everybody's like, you know, in our group chat lights up, everybody's like, hey, everybody block Sherm. He's being an asshole. Well, so Sherm, why were you being an asshole? The beautiful thing about the internet is if you don't want to see the content, you can unfollow. And that's what happened that night. How many, you, how many I lost, I lost you? like 60 in, in maybe 10 minutes. I lost 60 followers, but I was also slowly gaining followers 
Because some people like the bit. You they know thought it told, was funny. Right? Like okay. It's not going to be like for everybody. It's, it's not going to be for everybody. It's not for everybody. Swinging. Were you getting traction yes. on there? No, I was... I'll, like six likes. The highest one. You know, and you know what, too? I was talking to Sherman about it. He was like, oh, the guys who liked it, like, they were DMing me, like, keep going, keep going. I'm like, so how'd it go? He's like, I mean, the same people just like the... So he's like, all right, so you were just entertaining a few people. There was only one that didn't receive a single like. Uh, and that one read, if you don't mind, can I read that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sir Yonsel, the dark one, has entered the ring, <laughs> has entered the ring to uh, claim his birthright and throne. Tyson and Paul look stunned heading into round seven. Hashtag Tyson Paul. I was a little shocked that that one didn't get a whole lot of traction. I thought that was how funny. many? What was the stats on that one? Zero. <laughs> one like. I think that was Probably one of my burners. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was one of my I burners. Think that was one I like my that. Burners. So yeah. Sherm, is it fair to say, hey, if you if people on here listen, and you want to go follow Sherm Stew underscore two. Yeah, it's great fair follow. to say, hey, great follow if you want to go see somebody just being an asshole on a troll all the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but we have a lot of fun. We talk, uh, you know, some college football. We also talk bus, and so come on down, Sherm Stew underscore two. Come on down. Yeah. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna say <laughs> negative things that Sherman did, I'll give a positive to Sherm. Last night, I I have an obsession on on Instagram with the videos that say like ladies. When I like, it's like a little quote says, "Ladies, when I go, I want to go peacefully." And it's a when you come, and then it's like a scene from Halo or Jon Snow pulling a sword out against all the people riding against him, yeah. mm. and then it just says "men." And I, for whatever reason, every time I see one of those videos on Instagram, I like have to watch it. And I get goosebumps every time. And I had Sherm make one for the Chandler Oliveira fight that I just posted a couple of seconds ago, and I loved it. And then you you woke up from a nap. I called you. I was at a birthday party. Yep. And you got up and you got it done quickly. Yeah, so we I got appreciate done. you doing that. We got done. And honestly, it worked perfectly with the Chandler fight. Like, it actually looks sick. You are two for two on that Thank meme you. template. I do. I love that meme. Yeah. I love that meme. It's probably my favorite one out there right now. And it's hitting right now. Thank you. So we'll just ride the wave. We'll just yeah, ride the wave. You don't all like the, the content? Through. What are you going to do? Yeah. Just unfollow. Take That's positive. Okay. Hey, take the pros and the cons. Put them all together, brother. Hopefully it balances out to positive. Hey, Taylor, you've already done this meme. Why are you posting this meme all the time? You're hey. a pussy, Taylor. All Thanks. right, man. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for the comment. <laughs> Thank you for commenting. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate yeah. you. Thank you for my algorithm going up. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, anyway, dude. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. I think Netflix is going to be super smooth in, at Christmas time. They probably saw yeah, that. they will. And everybody talking about Netflix too. It's like what you want. Like there's no bad publicity when it comes to any of these streaming platforms. There probably won't be nearly as many viewers from the Netflix uh, NFL stream. That, I think that's yeah. probably why. There was it'll so, still be such big, an though. influx. Of, yeah, it'll be big, but it probably won't even be. It'll be like 20% of the viewership, I think. Yeah, I mean, 60 million people. Yeah. Which is wild. Netflix like, will be 120 like right after 4 the fight. million, maybe. <laughs> hey, how about those two girls fighting before the, the Paul In fight? What a fight. Yeah. Incredible. A fight. The fight good. of the night. Serrano, 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 got, Serrano got screwed in a big way. Epic fight, though. And obviously, I don't follow I don't follow boxing and don't know anything about it. But like, apparently, this Taylor girl they were saying during the broadcast, this Taylor girl loves to like come in with the head and multiple hey. fighters. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Multiple fights. She's cut her opponent's eye. Like this has happened over and over and over again, where it's like no longer a coincidence. And dude, Serrano's. Well, I don't know if it was her dad or it was her trainer taking the mic and just owning it for a little bit. It's like, oh, this dude is doing exactly what he needs to do. But that Serrano chick really got yeah, it. Yeah, when he got grabbed the mic yeah. and started speaking, it was, it was, it, it too, like, again, I don't follow boxing that much either, but it seems like the way Serrano lost on the cards and everything else, it seems like this is, this is typical boxing fashion. Yeah, typical. Like fighters getting screwed. Who knows oh, what the, yeah. The, dominated her, man. And she was what, coming alive though. Like Taylor was. There were some rounds, there, especially there, at there the end. There were good throws. There were good throws especially both ways. Especially at the end, it was kind of like, oh shit, Taylor might be right. having a little comeback here. Total strikes? Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. The yeah. stats were... And I love the fact that, obviously, for, you want the health and safety of the fighters, so now we got the disclosure out of the way. But I, I love that they let the fight keep going. Because when that cut happened, JP, who's like my fighting expert, that when I'm around him, he gives me all the information. He's like, oh, they're going to call it. They should call it. On the broadcast, they were talking about calling it. You could hear hot mics in the back saying, ref, call it. And they ended up not doing it, which was awesome. Because like for me, just as like a person viewing it, I'm like, I want to see how this ends. Yeah, I mean, she's a gladiator. A gladiator. The Italian chick in the Olympics would have quit, but not Serrano. <laughs> Bro, the fucking camera placement when she is getting interviewed and the black chick with her tits just hanging out just over her right shoulder. <laughs> funniest thing in the world, dude. It is the funniest. Look at that. Just the cleavage right there is just wild. Being asked questions about her fighting career, there's I think a pair of tits. There was like, out. I think I saw a meme with that too, where like they're saying this cut is massive, but not talking about the cut of Serrano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cleavage. 
And also Mike Tyson, <laughs> Mike Tyson, uh, the cameraman getting Tyson's cheeks in the yeah. locker room, bro. How wild is that? Bro. That was awesome. That was, that was. Shout out Mike Tyson, though. Definitely still squats. Yeah. Definitely still squats. And shout out the local YMCA. Like that is a scene, when, especially when you're young and just getting introduced to <laughs> these locker rooms at the YMCA where you go and you just see these old men walking around butt ass naked and you're thinking, what in the fuck is going on dude, here? My, <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. You guys, you guys know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Dude, my dad, when I was a kid, would go play like hacker hockey, like this is like men's league, men's league hockey club. And then I would go and watch and then we go in the locker room after. And these dudes, I'm like seven. Dudes walking around no towel and everything. You're thinking, what the fuck is this about? What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is wild. And now, yeah. now that I'm older too, like I haven't experienced it like in that setting around like being the older guy, but I'm thinking to myself, why are you not covered at all times? Like knowing kids Pedoph could be walking pedophilia. around. That's like a, that's a creepy thing to do. Yeah, yeah. If there's a child right? in the room, you need to cover well, up. When you're 65, you're 1000% going to be that guy. Oh, at the locker room. Oh, don't, don't. Oh, no. Bro. Don't get him, bro. You know he will. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I mean, we know I, that that Oregon when we were driving back. Yeah, from the game in Oregon, you guys talking about how he's gonna be was probably exactly it. Just can't get him off the couch. And hey, we were legit talking about this in New York too. How you are like you never want to go do things, but once you go do things, you have the most fun. But it's That's really just true. A, it's really just about getting you off the couch for sure. Yeah, That's me, man. <laughs> If I got an opportunity to stay at home and just be at home in my routine and everything else, like I'm about staying at home. Yeah. I love being, I love being a homebody. I love it. Love being a homebody. Well, staying true love to yourself. Going out, getting, staying going, true to yourself. Yeah. Just going out, getting a coffee in the morning. Come right back. Yeah. Come <laughs> right back. <laughs> Fast. Come right, come right back. back. Home. Coffee's still warm. Man. Yeah, dude. So what else? What are we talking about, boys? What we got? Oh, uh, one thing to finish up, too, with the whole uh, being at home, postpartum, and everything else. I do want to say, we keep her hydrated with Body Armor. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Body Armor Sports Drink. Real hydration, real ingredients, packed with electrolytes, vitamins, and nothing artificial. Body Armor Sports Drink has great tasting flavors like great strawberry, tasting. banana, or Charles' personal favorite, the orange mango. Um, get yours today at Walmart or a local grocery store near you shout out to body armor keeping us hydrated at home when you're in the trenches when you're in the foxhole shout out body armor i love Rude drinks body armor we love body armor mm -hmm. before we get to nfl or college football i did say this in the beginning of the episode uh we have a special guest trey let's give a round of applause for trey on the bus hanging out trey why don't you grab yourself a mic brother and tell us why you're here today absolutely we gotta I didn't get know i was gonna be on the podcast i'm a little nervous to speak but uh i'll tell y'all why i'm here so jp right here i'm sure we get the camera on him he and i grew up like probably five minutes down the road from each other. Uh, he's a little older than I am, obviously, but I cover. Obviously. I, yeah. I cover, <laughs> I think he's like three years older than I am or something, but I cover high school sports down in, uh, it's Greer, South Carolina. And that's where we both grew up. Um, and, and, I, and I found out pretty recently, can't remember how I found out, but that he went to what's well, Eastside High School, which is literally 10 minutes from where I live and to where I was zoned to go to high school myself. And I cover their athletics. Oh, this would be a really cool story to kind of follow him around, see what he does here, um, kind of chronicle a day in the life of JP and do a nice little profile feature, 2,000, 3,000 word story on him that should be coming out pretty soon. Front so, page. Yeah, absolutely. Front, so, page. front page. Front page. Go. So I front page pay, local hey, paper, baby. Let's go, baby. So thank y'all for letting me uh, let me be here and just kind of observe. I'll be quite a church mouse, but I'm. I'm, I'm enjoying this so far, and I'm looking forward to telling his story. So, Trey, let's go, go, JP. Hey, yo, let's JP. Go, JP. One more for JP. Local legend, hometown hero. Hey, shout out, Trey. Shout, shout out, Trey, man. Welcome, shout Trey. Out. JP has been getting himself a little bit of a following. We got to the UFC fights on uh, Saturday night, and I think before we saw shook anybody's hand, we heard three different Gamecocks, Gamecocks callouts for JP. His uh, he's being known. He's getting known around the world around here as a Gamecock fan, becoming the number one Gamecock fan. Love it. JP, anything to say? It's all because of Beamer and the job he's doing. God. And you're it. the guy. You speak for the fan base, bro. You're the guy. Yeah, but the, the success. Cox by 90, though. For sure. Yeah, yeah. You guys have been having a hell of a Cox by 90, number one Gamecock. Hell of a run there at the end. Hell of a run on the back half of the year so far. Hopefully, God, God, I hope you guys do not just slip one up on Clemson. That's the biggest one. And can't overlook who you guys got this week? Wofford. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wofford. Can't slip up on yeah, Wofford. Can't slip up on Wofford. Trap game on Wofford. Trap game. <laughs> Trap game. 
Should we talk college football first? Let's talk college football, dude. Obviously, Saturday, uh, Saturday, I was out in New York. We were doing a little vlog that will be coming out later this week, so I didn't get to see a whole bunch of stuff. But I wanted to, I want to start off by talking about ASU. Kenny Dilly, State, man. Yeah. Dilly, Dilly, Dilly. Tempe, Arizona. The Valley is officially activated. We talked about it in the locker room. If you guys want to watch the locker room, that show comes out Thursdays at 6 a.m. Rumors swirling about possible Wednesday nights. Rumors are swirling. Rumors. Rumors are swirling. But as of right now, Thursday, 6 a.m., we talked about them playing Kansas State. If they win this game, the Valley is officially activated. Now that they've won that, it's number seven, BYU. They take an L. And we were saying in this pre-production meeting that if ASU beats BYU and handles Arizona the last game of the year, they're in the Big 12 championship, possibly against the Colorado Buffaloes, who took a fat L to the Nebraska Cornhuskers early yeah, in the season. Yeah, they did. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's our that's our massive win of the year right now. Which... Which is heartbreaking. Should because- add Ohio State. Should add USC. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Look, it sucks. I thought uh, the new OC, I thought he did a great job. Now, by the way, him being out of it, coming in to consult, being the play caller, being thrown into the situation where you're coaching these situational games where you got the two-minute drill going in halftime, you got the end of the game you're, you're calling. I thought the, the rhythm, the flow of everything was solid. Brutal. Fucking Blandino. Brutal. Oh, Miss PI calls, brutal missed penalty calls against the Cornhuskers. Last play of the game, dude's getting tackled. Banks is getting tackled. I seen the clip. He's getting. I tackled, seen the dude. clip. Like that should be a PI. Do we win the game? Who knows? But we know we get another play. Mm-hmm. We're down there by the goal line now. Um, but it sucks, man. We got two games left to go bowling. Two opportunities left. Wisconsin and Iowa. Of course, I believe we're going to get those. Of course, I fucking believe. Why? Because they're apparently. With uh, uh, the new OC coming in, do what? Holgerson. Holgerson. There's some new energy, some new swagger. And I'm not saying it like there's new culture being instilled. It's like when you're losing some of these close games and you're going into a bye week after uh, who we lose? UCLA at home. And then you got a bye week after that. You got to kind of like, that's a game where you. UCLA miss op. Missed op. Missed op, bro. Oh my missed God. Op. But that's a game where you have the opportunity as a player to sulk. Because you have a bye week. Bit, number one thing you want to do after you lose, you want to hurry up and get the next Saturday mm-hmm. so you can get the bad taste out of your mouth. You weren't able to do that after losing a very tight one to Ohio State, losing a game you should have won at home against UCLA. And then you can you can legitimately kind of like just be down in the dumps. But it seems like with Holgerson coming in that there's some juju still there. They played a very competitive game against USC, who's had the most like one loss, like uh, single score games mm-hmm. on the season. Um we just gotta, yeah. You know, we gotta get one. We gotta beat Wisconsin. This Wisconsin, gotta beat Wisconsin. Scary. No, hey, Wisconsin's listen, it's gonna be tough. Wisconsin's Wisconsin. tough. No, hey, while you were while you were talking, I was thinking about a little bit of a spin zone because when you guys take Ohio State down to the wire and barely lose that game, probably should have won that game. You think to yourself, oh, we're gonna be pissed off. We're gonna beat the shit out of UCLA, and then obviously mm-hmm. UCLA happens for you guys. Same situation now happening for Wisconsin. They take the number one team down to the wire, who's they're beating them late in the fourth quarter before they end up coming back and winning. They're probably thinking to themselves. Nebraska's down bad. We can beat the shit out of them. You could flip the script on them right now. We, we need Have to. a little blowout. This game is everything. Your guys is... Nebraska versus Wisconsin. I know I have PTSD anytime I see that W on the side of the helmet. Mm. Big Cat's a Wisconsin guy. Like, this game is Big everything. Big 12 championship we're both, 2012. We're both five, Big 10 championship 2012. And we're both five-win teams. Like, somebody's going to come out going bowling. Someone's going to come gotta out. It's got to be the boys. It's Lines got to be the boys. The sand. Yeah, it's got to be the boys at home. Nebraska. And you'd love to. Like, we're sitting in the same situation where you do not want to have your bowling hopes on the fringe of the last game of the year against your rival. Michigan's got to get Northwestern. Nebraska's got to get Wisconsin. We just get the bad taste out. Seven-year drought ends this week. Just pulling up Melvin Gordon for no reason. Yeah, what, <laughs> sure, what are we doing? You can't. You, you can troll all you want on Twitter, but the boy's hurting right now. I, I, I did not know that was Melvin Gordon. That's on me. <laughs> You have in Wisconsin versus Nebraska 2014. Oh, I meant 2020. Yeah, man, tough. But big game, man. A big game. It sucks, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Fucking Blandino. What's the deal? He goes to Beer Olympics, gets a little bit of a hangover, hasn't been able to get that thing off his back for the last six months. What's going it, on? It just it always seems like when Nebraska does have an opportunity, something just fucking happens. And Dean just fucks it up for Whether you guys. it's us making a bad play, a dumb play, or Dean Blandino <laughs> wants to throw the goddamn yellow laundry on the field. Or not throw the yellow laundry on the field. Fucking Dean Blandino. Fucking Dean. <laughs> 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 is Dean is Dean invited to the next Beer Olympics? Of course he is. We love him. 
We love them with busting with the boys, but when it comes to Nebraska, really seeing Nebraska, we fucking hate Dean Different Blandino. <laughs> we hate Dean Blandino, bro. <laughs> yeah, you should fight him. Absolutely. Hey, but college football playoff is going to shake up so chaotically. The SEC is absolutely nuts. Nuts. You guys have how many? Nine teams ranked in the top 25. Could arguably have five teams in the college football playoff. It'll probably be four. And the playoff that I have written up has you guys, has Tennessee, just getting the bad luck into the stick and just missing out. If you if you want, if you want, I can read my I can read what the playoff is gonna look like from my lens. I have uh the number one team is gonna be Ohio State. I think they beat Indiana this weekend. I think they get Oregon in the Big Ten Championship. I think on a, on like a neutral site, Let's assume I they think they get Oregon. Because I think it's good. it will be tough for Oregon to just beat a team like Ohio State twice. So I think they get Oregon in the Big Ten Championship. I have Alabama as my number two. I see Texas handling business against A&M. And I think the way it will unfold, because we have no clue how it's going to unfold, there's going to be so many two-loss great teams for the SEC that could get in. But I think the resume will get Alabama into the SEC championship. I think Alabama gets Texas in the SEC championship. Because Bama's been playing tough since they lost and dropped one at Tennessee. My number three team, I just think Miami's going to they're going to win. They're going to beat who SMU in the ACC championship. I think they'll get in. They're my three. My number four. And this is going to take a lot. This is just me throwing one. This is throwing a Hail Mary. I'm going to say <laughs> Colorado. I'm going to say Colorado finishes the year, becomes a two-loss team. Over they'll the get Sun Devils? Hear me out. Just hear me out. Oh, they, uh, Colorado's playing night. Nice. Playing so, nice. so playing is Arizona, good. too. Yeah. Like, the fact that ASU was seen to be, what, last in the Big 12? Yes, like Zero last. shot. And now they're fighting to get in the Big 12 championship. They have a tough one against BYU this week. I'm sure we'll break it down in the locker room on Thursday. But I have Colorado just winning out, being a two-loss team. I think they will rank them ahead of Boise State, which if you're a conference championship te- or a conference champion, the higher seed will get the, you know, the – the number four slot. So Colorado being my number four, my number five will be Oregon. They'll be a one loss team losing to the number one team in the country. They'll drop down to five. You're going to have a Penn state team. That's just going to be a one loss Penn state team. And it's going to be to Ohio state by a few points. Ohio state's going to be the number one team. Penn state will be six. Notre Dame will win out. They'll beat army this weekend. They'll be seven. I got Texas after losing the sec championship. They're going to drop down to eight. And then I think you have Ole Miss gets in at nine, Georgia at 10, Indiana will be a one-loss team just to Ohio State. They'll drop down to like 11. And then I have, Ohio, or I have Boise State being the G5. They'll be the the 12 seed. That's my college football playoff. It's a lot of pain in Jack's eyes right now. And that, and Jack, Jack, you 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 know you know I'm a GBO guy. You know I'm sort of a right. GBO I, I, guy. You're trying to look at it through. I, a clear I, I, I do. I, I root for you guys. I wanted you guys you to beat Georgia. I wanted you guys to beat Georgia. I just think like luck of the draw. Your one win, your your like big win, will be Alabama. You beat them by a few points at home. Uh, Alabama. There's a lot of laundry. Both teams. Both teams are missing balls deep. But since Alabama has lost to you guys, they've just they've handled business against everybody else. What was it Florida? That's what I'm saying. Like they've handled their business so well that their strength of resume is like Georgia, South Carolina, Mizzou, LSU. Like, I just think that they will have better common opponent, like better, stronger wins, especially if the Gamecocks finish out as a three loss team, they'll be one of the better teams in the sec. They're going to have wins over all those teams. And I think that's where just your luck where you haven't had, you haven't gotten the opportunity to beat some of these teams the way Alabama has Georgia Ole Miss. So I think you guys will just have bad luck because Indiana, they're going to lose to Ohio State, but they're going to be – and let's just say you guys are a better football team than Indiana. I know everybody's arguing about SEC should have all these teams in. They're, they're better football teams. That is that is definitely true. But you're going to have a one-loss Indiana team that's only – who knows how badly they're going to lose to Ohio State if they lose to Ohio State. But if they're just a one-loss team, they're going to be just like Penn State, losing to the number one team in the country. And I think they're just going to get in because they'll be ranked higher than what – Tennessee probably will be because you guys have just lost a uh, Indiana wins wins, I mean that's fucking awesome that means Ohio State lost I'm just thinking this is I'm just thinking I feel like this is how it's kind of going to work itself out I feel like Ohio State will be able to get one on Oregon in the Big Ten Championship if Ohio State loses to Indiana and they win out they're going to make the playoff regardless you talking about Indiana no I'm talking about Ohio State Ohio State State loses to Indiana it doesn't matter 
as long as they beat Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I think they're, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, ranked yeah, too yeah, high yeah. right now. Because Indiana will keep climbing, they'll face Oregon in the Big Ten Championship. Then yeah. both of them will go. I think all three of those teams will make it to the play. Well, yeah, Penn State as well. If Indiana beats Penn State, Ohio, I don't. Penn State's just gonna be there. They're gonna. They're, they're gonna just gonna lose. be there. They're gonna they're, be they, there. Yeah, they're gonna be there. They're gonna lose the first team that's ranked in the top five. Yeah, yeah. That's where it sucks. And even uh, people that are pro SEC, and I get it. I get why everybody, you guys have the best conference. But if you guys Clip look that. at, Clip you're that. just saying a bunch of shit Clip that, like that. the last two years, you've been fighting for. I know. I know. For. I, we do. We, I know. I, I do several different bits. This is a bit. Um. Um. Uh, listen. I gotta just. <laughs> oh, now we're doing bits. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, stick by stick. We have brick by bricks. We have stick by stick. We're stick by stick. One of our sticks has been, or mine, I'll speak for myself. Because you might now, still be broke. No, Big reminder, 10. Big Ten won the national championship last year. For sure. Okay. Last year. We have, we, the trophy lives in the Big Ten. For this sure. Year. I'm with this you. year. I, I, I agree. But top to bottom, you got nine quality teams ranked yeah. in the top. Uh, like the SEC, bro. And what I was going to say is people who are pro SEC, you want Ohio State to beat Indiana because if Indiana beats Ohio State, that's when you're going to look at a, a spot where the Big Ten is going to get four teams into the playoff. SEC will still probably get four. But if there's going to be like, you know, SEC is going to get the majority of their teams, you need Ohio State to win out. Or, you know, if you drop one to Oregon in the Big Ten championship. But all to say, the only way the Big Ten gets four teams in the playoff is if – Indiana, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. They're no, still, no, no. We still, they still got four. I'm, yeah, just, yeah, I'm I, I, I think, I think uh, Big Ten's getting four in I'm as regardless. And I think uh, SEC obviously gets four in regardless too. It's just a matter of what four, what combination right. of four because they have so many that can possibly get into the to the dance. Oh, uh, here's what I'm saying. You want Ohio State to beat the shit out of Indiana. Flashy. Yeah, because if not, like Indiana will have the argument to be a 10 or 11 seed if they barely lose to Ohio State. That's where, no matter what, the Big Ten will probably have four in there. Because, bro, think, I mean, you can't say until this Ohio State, Indiana. The, 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 fun, the fun thing about this playoff, because it is shaking up, this is the best year to have a 12 team playoff. If there's four from the Big Ten and four from the SEC, hopefully those those eight teams go at it during the playoff, and then we can really have something to stand on who has the best conference. Because in your mind, look at this, just this right here for Texas, AM, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Ole Miss, South Carolina. How many teams do you think Penn State's beating right there? I, I think they beat AM. They could be. I could see him beating. I, I could as see well. him beating AM. I could see South Carolina being a game. South, yeah. I mean, being a I game. But other, other than, than that, bro. Other than and then Ole Miss, they lost to Kentucky. Like they they they've <laughs> shown they've shown times of where they can earlier they can the falter. Early they can falter and fall away. Earlier you just don't know. But Tennessee, Georgia, Texas, Alabama. Yeah, it's it's a blowout. Yeah. You see, you see with the SEC that like, I understand. No, I understand where you're coming from, and it sucks. But like, I'm I, also saying. Brother, but all, we and, won it last year, and we're gonna have four in there. Let's hold. Let's hold the SEC. All of a sudden, has the crown in your mind till we get to see it because it's we're going to have the opportunity to watch it unfold this year. Yeah, we're gonna have the chance to see these boys duke it out, and and what's what. But you're but right. I also like talking a little bit about reality, and the reality is the SEC has some fucking squads. Yeah, like if South Carolina they got squads, win, South Carolina wins out in a solid fashion, they're gonna be a three loss team that's pissed because they are they. If they finish a, uh, with three losses, they will have been two plays away. LSU and Alabama from being a one-loss fucking Gamecocks team. Expand the playoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. It's going to be... Uh, I have a question. And I hope Notre Dame beats the shit out of Army. Yeah, I, you don't, I do not want a world where Boise State wins out, Army wins out, and you're looking at two of these The most squads. unpatriotic thing you've ever said. Because, bro, they would get, again, it's like, bring, it's like bring up the standings of Big Ten or SEC. They would get mopped by a lot of those teams. Down their leg again in the playoffs? They like, might. <laughs> you're right. But, bro, then you're looking at what? You're still looking at Boise State and Army being in the goddamn playoff. Hey. Boise State's got a real shot out Boise there. Boise State has a harder Boise schedule than Notre Dame. Dame. Boise State is going to lose in the first round. So is Notre Dame. Maybe. I mean, no, they, hey, hey, they sure, beat sure, sure. I understand the fight you're doing. Will Compton grew up a Notre Dame fan. There's a piece of him when he sees that golden helmet that still gets him juiced up a little bit. He doesn't have that same feeling Dame's for beat Boise A&M. State. They did. They lost to Northern Illinois, but on his argument of like, yeah, how good is A&M? Who else is A&M A&M is number two in the SEC as yeah, of right who, now. But who have they beaten in the SEC? I mean, they're just like Texas. They haven't really Please grab a mic if you're gonna. Please, please grab a mic. They haven't really faced anybody this year. I mean, they faced like the LSU mean? game was like super hyped up. Look at LSU now. 
LSU still, uh, even though everybody's calling for Brian Kelly and he should be called for, it's like LSU's not like a bad football team. No, but they're they, very, they're just an underperforming LSU team. Yeah. They're losing. I don't know. I'm just saying Notre Dame getting in once again, they've never won a New Year's Six Bowl or BCS Bowl. They have never won a CFP game. Like crazy, that's stat. crazy. Why Sherman, let him in? Sherman today? is before the season started. He had he lay sat me down. And he was like, I don't like Notre Dame. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't I like him. I think it was before it was before A and M Notre Dame, and you were you were talking about how you had all those stats. You don't like him. Now you're sitting with a man having a conversation who does like Notre Dame. Yeah. I get it. That's beautiful. It's not necessarily. It's just. But I to would, say you don't want Army in the playoff, that'd be fucking awesome to have Army in the playoff. Or Boise State. You yeah. don't want to see Genty just run all over some blue Boise line. State, I have, him in. I have him in. I have Boise State in. It would be a five because it's the highest non-group of five, right? If Notre Dame lost, and that's where Boise gets the shot to go to number five, I think. Yeah. Right? Or or Army, if they're ranked above see? Boise. If you get Army they're... or Boise at number five, that's fucking nuts, bro. Could, Will, if I said to you, Indiana's going to be five this year, you would say the same thing of, in the same category of, as Boise State and Army. You would put Indiana and be there. That's fucking wild at number five. Indiana would blow the brakes off of Boise State. I'm not State. saying that. I'm saying before no, the wouldn't. season started. Blow the brakes off of them. No, yeah, before the season started, of course. Right. Nebraska's in my But Indiana, a team that's, for the first time in their life, had 10 wins. For the first time in their football program, they have 10 wins. <laughs> and they're number five, and no one's even batting an eye at that. But they're big. Like, oh, it's shit. great. They're going to make it. They're running through the Big Ten right now. They're running through. They almost lost to a below average Michigan football team. They have the 106. I mean, the Michigan, that's a Michigan game. had a chance. I you're, did say that. I did you're, say you're, that. Last you're week. walking through the Big Ten schedule. You got Michigan right before a bye week to play Ohio State. Like, uh, uh, you can easily be caught up in looking ahead and wanting the game plan and be like, yo, we're if Ohio have, State's going to be the game If you have us. an IU on the side of your helmet, do you ha- do you uh, are you afforded the luxury to have a trap game? I'm not saying you, you have. You're not, you're but not when afford- you're undefeated you- as a player, you're thinking that. You're like, okay, we're going to we're gonna get Michigan here. We're but we're going Michigan. Into the, yeah, we're going into the bye week and we're going to start game plan. Ohio. I bet when they were prepping for Michigan, they were still running a couple plays. Like, hey, period. Well, we're just going to run six plays here. And this is what's... Oh, don't I'll fucking say that. I'm telling you. Don't you, fucking say that, You've been there and you dude. know that, bro. No, because when I was at Michigan, we were ass. So there was never a, hey, we're going to run a, uh, this play three weeks before. It's like, yo, we got to beat Rutgers. <laughs> we, we out here fighting for our fucking lives every single week. We, Rutgers wasn't in, wasn't in the Big Ten when I was there. But you know what I'm saying? Indiana, that IU being there and being a top five team in college football is just as crazy as Army making the playoff or Boise State making the playoff. Before the season, but now that we're in the season, you look at it like Army, it's not like they're... Like, okay. look at fucking- Indiana, pull up the SEC schedule again because now I'm going to flip the script on Will a little bit. I, I I can't wait to see the Big Ten the SEC battle it out. Who's Indiana beating on this schedule? Indiana is 10-0 and 0 right now. That's great. I asked you a question. Who are they beating on in this schedule? Indiana can beat all of these teams right there. Oh right now. Oh Dog. God. That Until they play crazy. Ohio State, how can you sit there and say they're not going to have a I shot? I hope Indiana beats Ohio State. I hope that is the case. And then if they do, it's going to be like, Indiana can beat all of these teams. They can. I don't think Ohio They can State's also lose to all of these teams. Like, if you look at this schedule, Army's beating, without question, none of these teams. But you could say the same argument. They're undefeated. Okay, Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them, go ahead. Yeah, bring them Notre Dame. No, well, I'm Notre Dame beat Texas A&M. But bring up Army's schedule. Okay. Let's see what the let's see what these patriotic heroes have done on the gridiron for the past twelve weeks. Indiana hasn't played a single ranked team. They have the weakest strength of schedule of the entire top twenty-five. I remember, I remember you guys talking about Michigan like that. They ended up winning the oh, national championship. Uh, speaking so of Michigan, I, I got a Air question. Force. You know what? I'm wrong. Army beat uh, North Texas fourteen to three. The mean green. They, yeah, they could beat anybody. The, you're you're they talking nasty with the mean green? 23 over Air Force. Air Force runs, 45, runs they a gave very up, they complex gave up, offense. They gave up 28 to East Carolina. 44-10 UAB. Yeah. <laughs> you were making the same facial expressions last year when Michigan was going to make the playoff. And you're like, you guys haven't played anybody. You guys only play Penn State and Ohio State. But bro, there it's not. I last year, if you look at Michigan and you pull up that, it's like 
of course you want to see him drop. I told you I was wanting, I was going to be there when the trust the me, I relive it every, happened. every night when I go to sleep It's the last thing I think about when I go to sleep, my best friend, but, re- my but the reality is the way you guys are playing, you can look at the whole sec and be like, yeah, you guys can beat all these teams. You just get, you can also them. lose to them. The sec is not like the Yankees. Not, not everybody's scared of the pinstripes. All right. Like they, they got some good ball clubs in there. There's no doubt about it, but you get the playoff. Anybody can win anything. We've seen Georgia not do well. We've seen Tennessee not do well. We've seen Alabama not do well. Hey, why is Ward Manuel on the CFB playoff committee? He should not be. Why? And this because of the asterisk championship and your cheating scandal. And I'm not trying to make you upset. I feel like if you have a cheating scandal, there's no way you should be on the, the he didn't do anything. playoff committee. Connor Stallions is he the one is in the question. athletic director of Michigan. Yeah. That it goes on it it's it goes down on him. All right, man. Is I, that, I see is a there lot, not, is there a not lot a conversation of to be had? I don't think Ward. We don't need to slander Ward Emanuel. I'm not trying to slander name. Ward. Well, that's weird because it but was not even prompted to brought I'm up. I'm sorry. You I mean, if yourself. you make a mistake, you have to own it. You have to face the consequences. Well, who made a mistake? Nothing's been proved the, yet. We had Connor nothing's Stallions been proven on yet. Here. You saw it in his fucking eyes. It's okay. Listen, Connor Stallions is a diligent man who's very detailed. He's got six manifestos that are nine thousand pages each. Okay, I can't. I can't. Stop one rogue guy getting crazy on it, but we're not going to take down a the most prestigious program in college football because of it. The most wins in college football. The most iconic colors. The most iconic block letter in college football. <laughs> hey, I love it. This Look is- at that M. You want to take the M out? You want to hurt the M because of one guy? Passionate? One guy. One Arguments team. are Every- happening. Every team, being had. every team has a crazy 5%. Ours just did it better than the rest of you. November football is here. And we can't wait to maybe get out to one of these games with the help of Game Time. I'm, hey, the official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. You know how much we love Game Time. Now with their brand new Game Time Picks feature, they're making it even easier to get to a game. Game Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. So if you want to get out to the Nebraska, Wisconsin, you want to get out to Michigan Northwestern, um, go check out Game Time Picks deal for great seats. Just pull up your chosen event and turn on the GT Pick setting at the top of the screen or browse the best local Game Time uh, Picks deals near you on your Game Time app homepage. What are you waiting for? Go buy those tickets with Game Time Picks. Nice. Hey, and shout out everybody seeing our, our commercial. I got to see it. We went to ML Rose to have a little burger. Shout out uh, ML Rose. No free shout outs. But I uh, got to see it. It was on TNT. There's an NBA game going on. And I got to see it going down. I was like, oh, this is pretty That's fucking cool. dope. Yeah. At a bar. Yeah, at just a bar. Hanging yeah, out. Just at a little bar. And somebody uh, was like, hey, that. oh, that's you? Because I was like, Rue, look, it's Dada. It's Dada. And she's like, oh, you're on a commercial? I was like, yeah. Pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I'm taking I'm taking win to the Northwestern Michigan game this weekend. That's right. I'll be using game time. I'll That's be using right, the game time app to get that thing done. Go bowling. Let's go Got bowling. To. Got to. Let's I go was bowling. and I I will I feel um obviously Oregon's a really good ball club and I wasn't gonna take her to the Oregon game, but she's just be getting older and she's really starting to understand. She sees when daddy's watching football, she understands who the Titans are and who Michigan is. Yeah. And I just wanted her first experience at a game to be a win. Yeah. A for sure you win. To. Well, you need, you need the vibes. We need a win. You need a core memory to happen. Yeah. We need a core a memory positive to happen. Core memory. She's fired up. We were laying in her bed last night. I was putting her down for, for her sleep and we were talking about all the things we're going to do. Take her to the Brown Jug. Probably go to Rick's American Cafe around midnight. Just give her the real college experience. It's going to be awesome. Mr. Spots. Mr. Spots. I will be taking her to Mr. Spots. Yeah. She'll be having a good time. I can't wait. Also, kids in like, College apparel, like cold, like cold weather college apparel. I don't think there's anything cuter. A little yeah. beanie on, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little Michigan hoodie. She's little, gonna be little, looking little, absolutely paint adorable. On the face. Yeah, a little paint, maybe little, little, little cute little cheek stickers. Yeah, we're gonna get her going, man. We're gonna absolutely get her going. Should but we yeah, transition man. to some NFL talk? Yeah, do, let's we, talk do about- we do we have any any uh, any uh, unanswered beef going on right now with some guys? I think the best part. Jack, of- anything else for you to say? <sighs> Football sucks. <laughs> and I know you're hurting. I know yeah, you're hurting. Tough weekend, yeah. But I will say this for the Tennessee fans out there who are arguing about the refs and stuff. Georgia outplayed Tennessee 100%. But when Carson Beck has a clear false start on one of the most important uh, plays of the game, and they're not calling it. That the, yeah, the bro. I mean, I'm with so you. Crazy. That was brutal. It, but Georgia did. Did you see the? Did you see the highlight? Yeah, 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 I saw that. Yeah. Just I wild. Know. I mean, with. I needed the Vols because the Titans have hurt me so much this year. And I was like, it's all good. Like, Titans doesn't even matter because the Vols. And now it's like, 
football doesn't matter. It never did. I was at a I was at a kid's birthday party last <laughs> night, and uh, one of the moms walked in with a Vikings jersey on. Ooh. Half of and she did, she kind of she looked at me. She goes. She kind of gave me a shrug. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck? There were so many Vikings fans in yeah. Nissan Stadium. I and saw I, your video. I get the skull. it because Nashville so is the worst possible situation for these things to happen because Nashville is a really fun three-day weekend town. So no a doubt. lot of away fans, they come in, they party Friday, Saturday. Cheap seats. Cheap seats. And then they beat the shit out of us in Nissan. And... It was one of the worst I've ever seen it. The end of the game when they're doing their skull chant, I, I was trying to find Titans fans. Like, I couldn't find them. Really? With the last two minutes left because they're so... Ugh. And that purple just stands out so much. And for a second, I thought the Titans might do some shit. Like, Dude, a 99-yard bomb yeah, to get yourself back in the game. But NWI, who we thought Traylon Burks would be. <laughs> Indiana. Damn it. Indiana. <laughs> Damn it. Indiana, Damn it. kid. <laughs> Hey, Nick Westbrook Aquina is such an unsung hero for that ball club, man. Three, four years just being the guy to do all the dirty work. Great blocker, good possession receiver, and then he gets a nice little treat, a nice little 98-yard bomb. Good for him, man. Hey, I almost, That is awesome. I almost had a nice parlay hit last night. Yeah? <laughs> Plus 1,100. What drop? What drop? Plus 1,100 on draft. You know what it was? So in the game with the uh, with the Bengals Chargers. Uh, Bengals Chargers, I moved the line over 42 total points. Um, over 53 and a half rushing yards by J.K. Dobbins. Uh, two passing touchdowns by Joe B. Over 250 pass yards by Joe B. Anytime touchdowns for J.K. Dobbins and Jamar Chase. And the only one that didn't hit. J.K. Dobbins over 12 and a half carries. He had 11. Oh. oh. Plus 1,100. Oh, plus 1,100. And he got the yards like at the end when he popped one there uh, to go up. Big run. Yeah, Big yeah, good run. power run. Because I'm thinking, you know, they're going to – Harbaugh, they love to run the football. This yeah. could be one to where they run the football well. And J.K. Dobbins, he's been playing well. But, man, hey, one the leg off. Hey, the guard on that play off. blocked two guys. It was That was a beautiful play. What's How's going the Chargers? With, what's going on with NFL kickers? McPherson – Young Hoku, I, I know, Tucker. bro. I, I don't know. There's some in the water. It, yeah, if it's Justin Bengals, Tucker, once you yeah, once you say Justin curse. Tucker, you know something's up. Something's in the water. Because kickers miss every single year, but Justin Tucker never misses. I mean, the best kickers last He's year, had a who couple have been years notoriously where... the best kickers for the last decade, are all like. Justin are they Tucker be on is one of them. I want to say his last two years, he's been real shaky when it comes down to the crunch time. Real shaky. Man. Yeah, I don't know, man. Because Bengals, Bengals were there, fifty-one the ba- yarder for two McPherson. times in a row. Yeah, forty-one and a fit or fifty-two. Because what a comeback! Yeah, he had no problem Joe making B that in two thousand nineteen. Joe no Burrow problem is that. so fucking good, man, and it sucks because they just lose these games at the very end. They've just had the worst luck this year, and they yeah they came back from a massive deficit. What was it, twenty-seven to six? six. Yeah, man. Coming back, Joe B. Almost did it to God, him. Man. Almost fucking did it to him. How about the Chargers, though, starting three and three, and now they're seven and three? I know. It's just. I know. Hardball. Chargers. Hardball. Char- the hardball effect yeah. is real. I'm excited. And, to- and notice, no Connor Stallions on that team. Bring up their uh, <laughs> bring up their um, schedule. Maybe. Because I'm fired up to watch the Chargers for the last part of the year because they have a. They have a schedule that they got to finish And it's out. a team that no, like we talked about because Harbaugh became the coach there. And like, yeah, they could be good, but I feel like there's not been a whole lot of traction on the team itself throughout this year. And they're just like sneakily doing their things in the AFC West. They got uh, Ravens next week because they're on a bye right now. Right? Ravens dropped two in a row too. Wait, wait, wait. What's today's date? Yeah, they got Ravens this weekend. They got Falcons, Chiefs, Bucks, Broncos. And then they finish with Patriots and Raiders. Hey, the Broncos. Sneaky, spicy. spicy. No. Bo Nix is playing four touchdowns. Bo Nix is nice. Four nice. touchdowns, bro. I wish I wish we could pull up the clip of the Pro Football Football Show when Will was talking about Bo Nix in Week One, talking about how professional he is and how great he is, and Big Cat was giving you hell for it. Giving me hell. Look at him now. I know. Look at him. Now. I was even when I was on part of my take when we were at Camp Barstool. They're like, you know, when I was doing the whole Kansas City Chiefs thing, and then they were like, who who can get him? I was like. Broncos could be pretty tough this year. They no, they, they, they won't get the Chiefs. No. Chiefs are in such a great spot. They've only lost one game. Chiefs are a great football team. But the Broncos and the Chargers have a shot. Like, the AFC West has a chance to get three teams in the playoff. Well, that'd be Similar insane. with the NFC North. Yeah. You got the Packers, the Vikings, and uh, the Lions. The Lions, bro, the Lions, the way that they beat... They're the best team in the NFL. The way that they beat these teams' asses, bro. It's like... 
you know, outside of the game, the game, uh, have they dropped two games? Yeah. They're nine. They're nine and two. Yeah. They're now. nine and one. Nine. They're nine and one. They I dropped they, one oh, I game. thought they dropped two. My fault. The lions are like the way they're putting these ass beatings on teams. It's almost, they're, they're like a high school team where you can put some of the scores on the back of a t-shirt. They're putting 50 plus up on, I mean, they're averaging like over 40 points. A I game, know bro. just a, a truly complete team. Yeah. Well, one of their best players breaks their leg like five weeks ago, yeah. six weeks ago. And the kid's still like top five in sacks this year. Still top five and right Dane now. And Dane Campbell, like that that coaching staff, man, just has it. He's like, when you got when you got talented guys and they have that stuff to them, they got the right mix. He just, he juices you up, bro. Yes. He's got a fat lip in. He's yoked to the gills. He's got the vein coming out of his neck. And he just seems like a coach you want to fucking die for. True bro. culture guy through and through. Yeah, man. I like the Lions. Lions are like my team. I want to win the Super Bowl more, more than probably any other team right now. Yeah, I hope they do. I, it too. I just they, they, I the, they the city of Detroit too. golf is playing great. When we were there during our training camp tour, and that lady, I forget her name right now, so forgive me if she ever sees this clip of her showing us the stadium, talking about all the history, how it used to be a factory. They turned into a stadium. Then we go outside, we walk around the corner, and she's just beaming with light. Well, she starts to get fact, emotional. Yeah, at the fact that because Detroit, her father had passed away within the last year or two. I yeah, think. and the, the, just beaming with light, the fact that like Detroit is on the come up right now, and it's because of the Lions. And the fan base and all that, like that is, that's the fan base you want to just have something. Be like, hey, you guys go, you guys deserve this. I agree. No man. fan base deserves it more right now. I don't think, because it is, it's cool. Yeah. It's officially cool to be a Lions. I talk about it all the time. In fourteen, when Lions were ten on the clock, and I was thinking to myself, please God, do not take me. I don't want to be a Lion. Right. And now it's like you, Pete, could have been a legend. <sighs> Now look at me. I'm just sitting on a bus. Yeah, on a fucking bus. Just now, sitting man. on a fucking bus with a bunch of boys. I'm with you though, bro. And it just seems like they just don't have drama. No. Like they don't have them headlines. They, just, they don't have any bad yeah. drama. They don't I, have question marks. They have a team that you just know they're all rallied around each other, ready to play. I will say this. Amon Ross St. Brown still has not called me to come on his podcast after Michigan beat USC. But the still, ultimate disrespect. Yeah. Still hasn't said a word. I see their clips. I see they're still doing the show. It's very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. We DM back and forth a little bit. Nothing came from it. Not a thing. But yeah, the Lions, man. Jack NFC Campbell's North. playing some ball too. We were out there scouting him training camp. Potential first team all white. Really? Jack Campbell. Yeah. I'm wow. Telling you, he's a great ball player out of Iowa. Alex Anzalone fractured his forearm. Hate to see him go down like that. He's somebody who might have been able to sneak in. Um, but yeah, Jack Campbell. Keep your eyes out for him. He's playing good ball. You see in the boys too, the Eagles boys wearing the uh Blankenship and De, yeah, Dejean. Dejean rocking the shirts. Yeah. Excellent whites. <laughs> Exciting whites. Exciting whites. whites Exciting family. whites. It's beautiful, man. How uh how how'd your picks do? I had a decent weekend. I'm not gonna lie, I had a decent weekend. Dude, the I, I obviously miscalculated Chiefs Bills. I miscalculated that one. That was spot on. <laughs> so move the line. This is personal. My personal think, games are one and oh on the year. I, I do think it's that that's just a bad omen because this is just history repeating itself again. They're going to meet in January and the Chiefs are going to unfortunately win. We'll see, Josh man. Allen played electric, but I said it on the locker room. Chiefs lose. Chiefs win now to lose later. That switches up the entire twilight zone. But the cool thing is when they do meet again, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes play each other eight times. Series is four and four. Mm. Series is four and four. That yeah, is. We'll see him again. And we'll he, see him he, again. He, he, you just love it too, like this the villain era for Mahomes, just being a winner. Yeah, I love it. I love it because you know they're pissed off that they just lost that game. Pissed off. Good. They might be washed. <laughs> oh, here we go. Don't want to pick at the end of the game too, trying to press it a little bit too hard. I mean, they're down by nine I'm points. Saying, you they, look at their strength of schedule. They don't. You know, they finally went against a good ball team. You see it's what the happened. NFL. They're all good. They're all good. I mean, you, no. you, but yeah, you, well, yeah, not all of them. You happen to sneak out a blocked field goal against the Broncos. They should be down on a losing streak of two right now. The Chiefs, just putting that out there. Just putting it out. Just there. Just putting that out there. If you had to guess who's going to come out of the AFC West, do you think the Chiefs lose enough? I to think lose no. It? I no no no. I think three teams. I think Chiefs win the division, um, and I think the Broncos with their schedule at the end of the year and. Uh, Chargers will be interesting. They're yeah. going to have tough games, but I think Chargers got the makeup to be a good playoff team. You got the head coach. You got a good kicker. You got a good defense. You got a good run game. You can mm -hmm. throw the ball. You got Herbert. You got a quarterback. Like, they have the makeup of a good playoff team. Seeing the passion behind Harbaugh and Herbert, man, it's just beautiful. Calling yeah. him a beast. Beast mode. 
Great Half kill man, right half there. Beast. You just yeah, they're they're dialed in together, right? Yeah, now. they really are. And the offensive line's dialed in too. They're running the ball well, like complete team. Yeah, Bengals kind of just you know if three's going to get in from the the West, the Bengals that gets them out of it. You're going to have the Steelers. I think the Steelers take the division. Are we worried about the Ravens at all? Worried about them not making it? No, not making it. Just like their path to the Super Bowl. Are we are we showing are we showing some blemishes right there? Because I did not think there was a world where the Steelers beat the beat the Ravens. I knew really? the defense I mean, was really good. Bro. Their defense is very good. Yes. And they play like, you know, when you have quarterbacks like Burrow, you got Herbert, you got Mahomes, you got all Josh Allen. You have a quarterback to where you can win on explosives. You're an exciting offense all the time. Like, you know, with Arthur Smith, like they have such a great defense and they let the game offensively kind of come to them. They try to stay in rhythm. They don't do, they don't like try to force big plays. They yep. stick to running game, play action, screens. Like, as long as Russell takes care of the football and he's still got, like you saw it a couple weeks ago when he's back foot beating the, uh, beating the commanders. Like they take care and beat the Ravens. Like they're going to be tough, man. They're only a two loss team. Arthur Smith, man. He, I need him to get another head coaching job. I like him with the Steelers. I like him with the, yeah, I like him as a, I like him as the Steelers. I like the OC, but we don't want to see the boy with the HC. I mean, yeah, we would love to. Yeah. We'd love to. Yeah. Right now it's, Definitely proven that he's a better OC. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt about Maybe it. Quaver, no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, look, you get another opportunity. Like, you're going to learn. Like, he's going to get another opportunity at some point. But I do love him being the OC for the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Paired up with Tomlin, that defense is crazy. Playoffs are going to be, yeah, gonna be awesome. But, yeah, that's that's kind of how I see the, the West. The North shaking up. The South is going to be the Texans. Texans only. Um, yeah, but it's still like... I don't know. The Texans just, they're hurting. They're hurt in the receiver category. And I just think it's crazy that it still could be anybody's league. Like the Colts. Colts could be a little sneaky. Mm, I, yeah, pull, but, pull up the the records right now. Because I think it's closer than we think. Texans are getting Nico back tonight. Oh, they are. Yeah. And then the AFC East is just the Bills. Yeah. By far and away. Colts? Colts could mess around. I don't know, bro. I don't they, think they, they, they could for they, sure. Yeah, the Texans are a better football team, but yeah. you just never know the back half of the year. Oh, I, I don't see them winning the division. They're I don't see out. them in the division. They're a game away. Then you got the NFC. Uh, yeah, the NFC West is crazy. Niners sitting at the bottom at five and five. Niners Seahawks needed that five win five. yesterday against they the Seahawks. Did, they needed it bad. Rams five and five, Cardinals six and four. Do you see the Cardinals no holding on to that? I don't know. They could. I mean, bro, they absolutely they, could. But they've, it's just, they've been playing nice. Three and zero since Call of Duty. <laughs> Kyler Murray. They're on a four game winning streak. Yeah, and they're playing good ball here in the middle of the year. It's not like they started. It's not like they were streaking the front. They're kind of dropping. Yeah, I don't know how to call that one at all. I think the North gets three in with the uh, with Vikings, Packers, and the uh, Lions. I, the South. Is going to be what probably just the Falcons. Yeah, I mean, unless the Bucks, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess Similar that could situation. be interesting. Yeah, to the Colts and the. But Texans. only one team will come out of that, and then you got the, uh, the East, which will be the Eagles, and I think the Commanders get in. Yeah, they there is a world where they drop, but I I don't I don't think so. Yeah, the end that that well. the last three four spots of the NFC right now is up for anybody can grab it. Anybody can grab those I last love three that spots. The Giants are just like they they get it. It's over. Yeah. Time to move on from Daniel Jones. Which is I mean, what, $145 million contract? A lot contract? of money. A lot We've of money. We've seen it though. You, you I had know. Bradford make a shit ton of money and not be the guy. Yeah, Sam did the ultimate heist. He was the ultimate bank yeah. robber with I think he made $120 million. Because he was the guy right before the, the CBA, the new CBA. So he's in that class where you can make a shit yeah, ton of money. Like a sixty million dollar yeah. first yeah. contract. Yeah. Just wild. Yeah, Packers destroyed the Bears over the weekend. Bears had a glimpse of a shot. What right. is what what is Daniel Jones's future look like? What is what, what what's gonna happen? Is he now paid, gonna be find ba- himself? He'll be a backup somewhere. It'll be you know, Mac, It'll be like Mac Jones. It'll be like a Mac yeah, Jones situation. Yeah, but he'll Mac get Jones, on another team. Mac somewhere. Jones hasn't gotten paid though. Like what? How much guarantee is on Daniel Jones's contract? That's what I want to see. That's what I want to know. Poor guy. Too much. Too too much. Too much. But man. But it's over. It's over. Packers. The Bears almost snuck the yeah, Bears almost yeah. snuck the Packers. Yeah. Poor Bears, man. Poor Big Cat. They covered. Hey. 
Yeah, I guess. But they covered. It was, even in loss, lost even in loss, they're still victories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still victories. You want to hit an ad real quick, Paul? Yeah, matter of fact, we're talking we're talking spreads right now. Let's go ahead, go ahead, bro, and hit the rip the DraftKings one. Let's talk about DraftKings, boys. The NFL season is rolling along, and the contenders are separating from the pack. One thing that hasn't changed this season, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official uh, sportsbook partner of the NFL, is the number one be- number one place to bet touchdowns. Fade to the corner of the end zone, running back breaks through the line and gallops 60 yards to score. We don't care how they get them. We want to bet on touchdowns, and DraftKings is the best place to do it. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple, like a player to score a touchdown. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook dot DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Uh, here's a reason for new customers to do a touchdown dance of their own. If you bet five dollars, you will get hundred and fifty dollars back in bonus bets if it wins. As always, oh, call to action. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code BUS. That's B U S. For new customers to get two, oh, sorry, one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets. If your bet wins, you bet just five bucks only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. And look, if you guys are interested in the boys' picks, we got a show. The locker room drops every Thursday, six every Thursday. a.m. Rumors of it coming out on Wednesday nights now. Rumors. But that's where the boys pick games. Whether you want to tail us, you want to fade us. Myself, Taylor Lewan, Delaney Walker, uh, we make them shake. I, listen, I just want to rattle these off. Vikings minus six, Saints plus one and a half, Dolphins minus seven and a half, Colts plus four, Steelers plus three, Rams minus five, Bills minus four and a half. I moved the line on that one for my ballsy pick. Had a solid weekend. The ones I lost, Jag- or, uh, Jaguars plus 13, Packers minus six and a half, and Bengals plus one and a half, mm. which it pisses me off that McPherson missed that field goal at the end. Yeah. Jaguars was a tough one. It's like, you know, the Lions are going to beat them, but it's like Vegas was yeah. giving you 13 points. I want to say the line was 14 right before kickoff. It's kind of like, well, fuck. <laughs> Too many points. I'm just it. thinking like Call Vegas it. It, was game, it, was, it was my game of the week on the, on the locker room. You look at that, but the Lions. Yeah, Lions, are, they, they fucking choke you. Man. Yeah, they, they, they choke they you won. up. They sit on top of you. They put two hands around their neck and they choke you. And Slowly. They, they stare at you while you, your soul just leaves your body and they grin. The whole and time. And it's like, I only did it because like, again, you're getting 13, 14 points. Fuck it. Crazier stuff has happened. Yeah, Jaguars just bottom half in every single category <laughs> yeah, offense, they but they're suck. just so terrible. Yeah, yeah. And the way the Lions won against Houston the week before, uh, yeah, it's the reason why I thought no to doubt. myself the Lions is, is it's going to happen. Yeah, like Jaguars have zero shot, zero. The Packers one sucked, and the Bengals one sucked. Um, we, our touchdown parlay didn't hit again. I know. Let's. I think we got to take. We got to take number one. I think to spice it up, we got to take Derrick and we got to take CMC off the board. Here's here's a, here's a off the board. We got to come up with different shit. Well, CMC, doing- CMC's been bet two weeks in a row, so and he hasn't had one. Derrick Henry. I, I don't feel like I understand. We got to spice it up, but why would we put more parameters on ourselves when we haven't hit one yet? Because either way, it's like we're going to come here to lose, and it's going to be the same people every yeah. time. Okay, fair we enough. We bet on the same people. Fair enough. We'll switch it up. Just this get week. spicy, like we just. Fuck. Out of nowhere. Let it, let it, yeah. Let it fly. I really thought this was the week too. Montgomery, Henry, CMC. Uh, It's a great one. I mean, the the odds was only like plus 250. No, it was like 195. It was plus 195. And I was like, fuck, we'll take it, dude. We just need it. We just need it. Going into Sunday, I do think I moved to like plus two something because I was, uh, when I got on a bet, I was like, I mean, Plus two fifty sucks, but whatever. Let's ride. These are great. These are great picks. CMC, Derrick Henry, David Montgomery. I know, man. God. It would have been nice too to be the solo, the solo artist in the locker room to finally break the curse. I know. It would have, it would have been a nice. For Bet the Boys Parlay, Delaney cap. and I would have just had to leave the set. Darken it up, put <laughs> yeah. one spotlight on you. Hey Taylor, pick the parlay for us. <laughs> Man, but this week, new week, new opportunity, new, week, new, new chance. New yeah, bro. God. Yeah, bro. Do we have any shout out? No free shout out. I've been people see. I've been seeing people in the comments bring back shout out. No free shout. Do we want to talk UFC at all? I know Mike Chandler's oh, yeah, coming on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course you had a you had a weekend out there. We had a weekend. I mean, Trump, Elon Musk. It, yeah, it was it was a RFK. wild. And UFC JP doesn't. JP Hovey. JP Hovey. <laughs> UFC does an incredible job of setting that up too because. It was right as the main's about to start, and the there's like usually music playing in the background, right? They keep a little energy in the building when people are talking and chatting before the next thing comes up. For the 30 seconds, there was like no music or nothing. It was just like human beings in an arena speaking while nothing else was going on. Then all of a sudden, that Kid Rock song goes off, and the crowd, I don't think I've ever heard it so loud mm-hmm. in any, any stadium ever. It was insane and obviously we've we've been to some ufc fights so we were like yeah i knew rfk was gonna be there there was rumors about trump being there and stuff like that but jp and i were kind of like man if musk could just show up that would be fucking insane and sure enough walking through the tunnel dana white trump tulsi gabbert 
um, RFK, Elon Musk, Elon Musk and Kid Rock, <laughs> which is so funny, man. It's so he's just DT fucking Junior. just hanging, and the whole we, they had us in the second row, and it was it was funny because they kind of come up, they're literally right in front of us, and you're kind of giving the clap, they're doing the they're doing the wave. Dana comes up, says, uh, and it like reintroduces us to Aiden Ross and myself who were sitting right next to me. We shake his hand and you could see in the clip that, uh, JP took is RFK didn't recognize me at first. And then once Dana says, and he was like, Oh, and like came over, said, what's up? Was hanging out a little bit. Double up. He asked me, he's like, Hey, do you, does your phone have a camera? I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, it has a camera. So I pull it out and he, he like takes a selfie of the two of us. Yeah. But bro, it was wild. It was, and I'll say, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Her energy, man. Her she fucking was the most energy. Chill. Like she was so cool. Yeah, she was. Of Every, them all, everyone kind of was doing their thing and stuff like that. But she had like a calmer, like stoic presence about her. Yeah. You turn around. I was like, hey, I want to introduce myself. My name's. So she's. Oh, it's really great to meet you. Appreciate what you guys did for the president. I'm thinking That's to myself. So crazy. I'm That's thinking, so what awesome. the fuck? Like we. You mean him allowing? <laughs> Us to have him on the show? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Did, like, we were part of this righteous movement. I know. Trying to get it oh, all done. Did. When really we're just like, oh, it's sick. We're getting a president on. And people I mean, are we, like, we, thank we, you. We didn't even talk about it last week, but the, when the victory speech happened and Dana shouts out, he's like, you know, he has no reason to say thank you. He, he's just introducing the president of the United States. And he's like, before I, I hand this over, I do want to give some thank yous out there. It's like, right. you know, the Nuck boys, Aiden Ross, Bust with the boys, Theo Vaughn, and Joe he left Logan. off shows. <laughs> yeah, he oh, did leave off shows. Which Legit the best interview that was took the place. best interview, the best the best one. But we uh, so when Mike fought, I'll I'll just keep talking about just this. We'll talk about Mike's bro. fight. When Mike fought, Jelly was like, "Hey, let's go, let's go see him." So we went over to see Mike as he came around the cage, and after, uh, before or after the fight, right after the fight. Okay. And so Mike was going to come and exit the the cage, go left into the tunnel. He takes a right and goes and shakes like all all those people we were just talking about hand, and then comes through. So we give him some love, but like. While we were sitting there, so many people were trying to get photos and security was tighter than ever before. And JB's like, hey, we got to get to Musk. So I I had Bob, Kid Rock on the side of my, hey, fight was electric, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't look at his phone. And I see Aiden texting Dana trying to get a photo. And I'm just thinking to myself, bro, like we're here. We've had so many photos. Like maybe I just let this one ride this time. We end up seeing Mike, giving him some love. By the way, even in loss. The dude, his, his demeanor, smile on his face, just happy to be a, like, was just happy about the opportunity to fight. Like, that he's truly the greatest at taking a loss I've ever seen in my entire life. But I took that opportunity to walk back that little row and shook Elon Musk's hand. I was like, hey, I want to introduce myself. And I just, in, in true, like, his brain did not compute. He was like, nice to meet you. Like, it was, <laughs> it was like, he had no, he's thinking of memes. He's like, he, oh, he's thinking of memes. He's thinking, he was on, right uh, now. check out this new dude, Yeah. I was screen peeking throughout the fight on Musk. For those that don't know, I'm reading Musk book right now. So I'm on a super Elon Musk high and everything I read in the book was just happening in real time. He's scrolling Twitter. There's videos of him laughing at memes. Laughing. Like, yeah, I saw that. But he's scrolling Twitter then he's like swiping over to something that res like resembles Slack. And he's like clearly like doing work stuff, going back over to Twitter, back over to like emails, text trains, like what's WhatsApp with all the things. I'm just like, oh my gosh. You know, just John Jones sitting, standing right in front of him fighting. And he's just like probably on some Tesla thing. <laughs> yeah, looking just at looking a meme. at it. And then one of my favorite moments I saw later on a video was when John Jones came over and handed the belt to Trump. And John Jones went like this, and Elon is at the bottom. Elon just goes <laughs> with both of his hands too, and then puts him back down. I'm like this guy is Bro, exactly just operating at a different, different level animal. than everybody else. And but, dude, I gotta know what he and Kid Rock like. What could they have possibly talked what is, about? Yeah, what's that conversation even look like? And how did they get seated next to each other? <laughs> just crazy, <laughs> just crazy. Now I'm obviously a big fan We're of in Elon a Musk as well. Man. Like the way he's operating is just incredible. Limp dick, a uh, limp fish handshake. Oh, for sure. No, I feel like you can zero. Like it was basically just two hands inserting on each other and then walking away. He hadn't like, updated his body yet. The software is yeah, not. Yeah, the not, software was off. Handshake a upgrade. I, I went to the grip. Chip hasn't activated. Yeah. yeah, I went to grip and I didn't feel anything back and I kind of just loosened. Also, we kind of just put our hands like <laughs> gently together, like they cuddled for a moment and then. Hey, but that's so sick. Got bro. out of there. Dude. Did you get a handshake, JP? No, I had split up. We, uh, we yeah. did a little. Seat I texted swap. JP. I right. said, if you don't, uh, what did I say? If you don't meet Elon Musk, don't come back to Nashville. Damn. 
But it was it was uh, a wild experience, man. Great photo was, bomb here, by the way, by you two. Yeah. Oh, we all of it. Got to we, be we Mount Rushmore. The, the yeah. photo bombs were alive. You saw Jelly. Jelly saw posted Jelly's, a photo bomb as well. Yes. Yeah. And dude, um, we when we uh, were walking back before I shook Elon Musk's hand, Jelly was like, "Hey, when are you leaving?" I was like, "Oh, we leave tomorrow, Southwest, six thirty. And he's like, "Well, just come back with me tonight." Oh, that's so. Close, and we're like, man. I was like, "Oh, for real? You got room?" He's like, "Yeah, we'll make it work." I'm thinking to myself, all right. Yeah, but we'll make so, it work. Yeah, we'll make it work. No problem. Like, but you got to send me names and date of birth like right now. So I went and did that. We finished the fight. Literally, like we were like, what, four or five blocks away mm-hmm. from our hotel. Jogged the entire way there. Ended up getting on the phone. People like, like, uh, we got a police escort. We can pick you up. And they call back. And they're like, no, you got to meet us back at the arena. So we, we like got our stuff. Then took our luggage and ran back to the arena just to get there. And then we get in this car, dude. And the guy driving, he was like going like 75 around corners. Mm. He was ripping. Get us there. And I'm like, man, I hope the plane, I hope we're not like too squished in here. This plane's a goddamn apartment complex. It was Police huge. escort. Police huge. escort from Police Madison escort. Square Garden. Right. That's amazing. Amazing, dude. We got in there, ripped. There was like a flight attendant in there. And I'm thinking to myself, if it was just Jelly and his nutritionist, this is a ridiculous plane just to have hanging out. But he had to like go, go to Houston the next day. But yeah, it was loved by Jelly. And he gave us a ride to valet too. Yeah. Right when we landed. Just a huge bro move by Jelly, man. What a stud, man. It was awesome. I miss him. Huh? We need to get him back on the bus. We got to get him back on. But dude, that fight, Mike's fight, the whole day. I know, man. We'd be, we be hanging out. We did what, like 20,000 steps in those 48 hours? Yeah, like we walked around days. everywhere. 20K both days. Yeah, we did a uh, Nathan Worksman, my uh, knee lawyer. We mm-hmm. like hung out with him and we like took an Uber and he like made fun of us, basically bullied us and be like, you walk in the city. So we walked the rest of the time around, which was kind of nice. But we get to like periodically on Saturday, we're like sitting there and every once in a while, it'd be like a, 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 like a quiet moment. And one of us would be like, man, I'm getting juiced up for this fight. Just like kind of getting excited, excited. We get to the he arena. You fought in how long? Two years. Two, two and years, a half, two man. years. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And First off, Mike's new walkout song. Oh, that was oh, a banger. Unbelievable. Oh. Unreal. And he was just in the zone, too. You could see it. Dude. You could see it. That's why when he pointed at us. Insane. Like, took a moment to break like, himself out of the I don't know if I've ever been happier. Yes, dude. <laughs> and we're, like, yelling. And we're kind of, we're obviously talking about it. So, like, it's JP, me, Aiden Ross. Right in, like, right in front of me is RFK. And just to the left of him is Tulsi. And we're kind of sitting there. And there's a little chatter. We're obviously all talking. Like, Aiden's got a big bet on Mike. You can kind of feel the two in front two are like kind of also going for Mike a little yeah, bit. They're wanting to get in our conversation. Yeah, they're wanting to get in the conversation a little bit. Like, so go, go make a law. So like Mike that. gets Mike gets in the arena. He starts walking around. He does the point to us, which was like a goosebump moment. Like this oh. dude, I can't believe we're here supporting the boy. Like the first time we ever get to watch watch the boy fight in uh, live, and he has a moment with his dad. His like his dad's in his corner, and as uh, Oliveira's coming in. Mike is like leaned up against the cage. His dad's holding his hands and they're like praying or something. But it's like one of those moments you watch and it's like a tear almost comes to your own eye. Just watching that moment between father and son as he's about to go after what could be an Mm. opportunity to go get a belt, like his lifelong dream. And man, (sighs) Oliveira walks in. He's good. He is. He's, you said it. Yeah. I mean, you said it multiple times, like the, like a well-rounded fighter. Oliveira, bro. Comes in, you know, the moments he has with all of his guys too. And even coming over and hugging Chandler, it's just Mm. like, he's a good dude, just a good dude, like a warrior spirit, just in the most positive way. Yeah. Like an example, a great example. And Mike had a a phrase, Mike had a phrase, like I had to win by one, not a thousand. Like he had a whole different mindset that we've talked about Mm. in this bus multiple times. It's like, you got to come out and just, bro, just, you don't have to empty the chamber on like the first round. Yeah. And so he kind of had that mindset. And for the first three rounds, like obviously it wasn't going Mike's way And at you heard all. Rogan too before as talking in about his style. He's like, this is going to be a different type of Mike Chandler. Matter of fact, I, I know it's going to be a different type of Chandler that you're going to see an improved Michael Chandler. And I'm just thinking to myself, like Joe's probably talked to him. Mm-hmm. Like he is probably going to be a little bit more like let the fight come in versus forcing the issue. Right. But Oliveira just... He's so good. Took him down multiple times. JP's so like whispering in my ear, longer. like, hey, he's got to go to the body, go to the body. Because Mike kept trying to go to the face. And Oliveira had his hands like suit way, way up. Obviously, you're sitting in, you're, we, we have no idea what's truly going on in the fight. But like all the things JP was saying, I was like, yo, that makes so much sense. I hope his corner saying that. Rogan and them on TV and DC, Cormier, you're just talking like Chandler's in a dangerous spot. If he gives, if he just like gives up this one thing, like don't give him your back, don't do this. Like Oliver is completely comfortable. If anything, you just want to hang on, which Mike was doing and kind yeah. of surviving the rounds. But 
Oliveira was just so long, man. Got him on the ground, was fighting Dude. him, was fighting him from the outside. Like Chandler just couldn't, I he know, couldn't do man. anything. Like Oliveira was putting on a clinic, bro. Yeah, on but clinic. any other fighter is getting tapped out in one of those first oh, three 100%. rounds. Oh, 100%. Like that defense by Mike is yeah. ins- like They were raving about it too. Him surviving like, the rounds, like getting out of those situations. People don't understand at all how high level defense you have to right. have. Right, because they were even talking, they're like, in the first round, they're like, Mike's been in this situation before. Or right. wait, it was maybe in the third round. Mike's been in this exact spot with him, the first fight. Then either DC or Rogan was like, yeah, but that was in the first round. He was able to create a sc- scramble and get out of it. Not when they're both kind of weighing each other, the conditioning setting in. Like, this is going to be a really hard spot because I want to say Oliveira had the triangle on his body. That was yeah. round three. Yeah. It was Bro, like, this was going to be a torso stretched out. Yeah. It's like, this is going to be really hard for him. This is a difference. This is being it, it being in round three is going to be much more difficult. But Mike surviving it. Then you just get to that fifth round. It's like, he's got to let it fly now. I know. Got to let, let it fly. Every single round, dude. As soon as like the buzzer would hit or the bell would ring, JP and I would stand up, clap up. <laughs> Let's, Mike, go. Dude, Let's go, Mike. Let's go. And then the fucking fifth round's about to start. And I, I stand up like, got to win by a thousand, Mike. Just like screaming. Like I am, I feel like we were no longer in the arena. We were just like solely focused. We yeah. didn't care about anybody else around us. And bro, when he clipped him, no, oh, I'm like coming up out of my cousin. Bro, oh, we on, were bro. standing up. I stood up. He about knocked leg. me over. Sage Steel right next to me. I'm like, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was standing up, leaning over the people in the front row, like screaming, yeah, screaming like a true fan. And this dude has him on the fucking ropes, throwing elbows on the ground. I'm thinking, finish him, finish him, finish him. They're gonna fucking call it. They're gonna call it right now. And he fucking gets away. Gets away from him and gets on the ground with like, what, like a minute and a half left? Yeah. Minute and a half left, gets him on the ground, and we sat down. We're like, that's it, man. And, and they're both like, Mike gave us the show, though. I yeah. gave us the Dude. show of a lifetime. It was so cool seeing him because he easily could have just stayed on the ground. And I feel like that moment is exactly who Michael Chandler is. He could have stayed on the ground with Oliveira on the fence. He knew the fight was over once he got taken down, but he freaking grinded his way up to get 100%. his feet in him and, like, no, like, I'm going to determine how I'm going yeah, out. Right. And, and the he had that, that he is. the grin he had fuck on his it. face when he walked over there. Just walked over and mouth, fuck it. I'm like, dude. And ah, it, it was so cool stands because up again. Ah. literally before the fight, Bruce Buffer read a Gladiator 2 ad read and yeah. then watching the fight happen and it end like that. I'm like, Gladiator 2 needs to use Michael Chandler to cut whatever their next promo is because it was a Gladiator moment. It was yeah. unbelievable, <sighs> man. And a piece of me too when he was trying to body. So I was like, maybe I'll knock him out that way. Yeah, maybe I'll get him. Maybe <laughs> maybe he'll get him. But dude, it was it was an awesome fight. Yeah, awesome fight. And the the first round too, I think something happened with his knee. It looked like he, he caught one of those kicks. Yeah, he caught one of those wobble. kicks and Ooh. got a little wobbly. You could tell yeah. when he was throwing punches, like something was off. Man, something when he clipped off. him in that fifth round and had him and just whiffed on those two punches, I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Just missing Missed it. millimeters, bro. I know. Because he had him. He had him. He had him. He fucking had him. It's almost, oh my God, he's going to do it. And dude, yeah. But even in defeat, dude, the way he came around the corner, smile on his face, yeah. face yeah. bloody. Calls out McGregor. Great call out. Oh, great, great call, call out. out. Dude, I feel like with Mike's attitude, it is such a testament of like how he lives his life where he truly cuts zero corners on any of it. So even in defeat, it's like, man, he knows he put it all out there. Right. There's nothing in preparation he could have done differently. Yeah. And they're like, obviously he's going to be sad, but he has that piece of contentness to him that you feel when you're around him. And it's like, I think that's what's so special right. He about empties him. the cup, bro, on all of it. Yeah. Like you said, he doesn't cut corners. It's like seeing him weigh in and knowing that we're around Mike when he's like 185 and everything else. And you just see like this dude has put in so much work. Yeah. Because he looks like a different human being when he's Completely that Completely different. Like yeah. body just totally just face is just way skinnier. All of it. Yeah. But yeah, man. He's, he's, a, really he's, a, he's a gladiator, bro. He both is. of them. I mean, it was fun to yeah. watch both. Yeah. yeah it's like fun all to watch. respect to Oliveira. Like yeah. he is a stud. It's fun to watch both of them too because they respect the sport so much that you see the respect that they have for each other and they know they're just both laying it on the line Mm -hmm. and putting on a show for the love of the sport and the love of the game. I wonder if Oliveira knew that Mike was going to switch it up. If it was that, like if Joe was talking about it over the broadcast, if Oliveira had an idea that he was going to come out as aggressive because it felt like in the first round, like Oliveira was kind of like ready for him to start charging him and they had to feel it out for a second because it was kind of boring. The first yeah. round, you know, not as much for us because you're just so you're so yeah you're so yeah. But if you're just watching as a right. casual fan, right. you don't know either of them. You're the, you're watching like man, they gotta start doing something. They're both really trying to figure each other out. Yeah, and then 
obviously Oliver was able to get him on the ground. You know, I think there's every a, round. you know, there's a game plan for both. Like I'm sure there's a game plan for Mike being a little bit more, let the fight come to him. Mm-hmm. And then when it's not, because again, you could say Mike's going to let the fight come to him or be a little bit more cautious or take his time. But Mike has never shown that he'll do that. Even when it starts to get heightened. Yeah. Yeah. But, Ah, yeah, I know. So close, dude. John so Jones. Close. Then you go to John Jones. Oh my God, bro! That bro. spinning little back kick. The to sound the ribs. it made. Yes, you oh. could hear ribs breaking. Hear him snapping. I mean, he like just twigs. dropped him like there. He he couldn't move. Right. He he is a I, big man. Bro, big man. Bro. But in the, in the first round, when uh, Jones was throwing those elbows into his head. And then someone was saying like, no, stipe has got like a, like a rock solid chin. There's no way he's going out. Like they're yeah. not going to call it. And I thought Stipe had a couple of times where he kind of grazed yeah, Jones. He couple he'd get a little nervous. Yeah. Making him a little nervous. It had to have been nuts for you guys. Like when you see a fight happen at what uh, Mike and them fight at 155, 155, 155, 155, and then you see two heavyweights go out there. Like the size difference is so much different. Knowing those elbows are dropping on the ground. Like it's not like these lightweight people. It's like the women from the boxing match the night before. They're just able to tee off on each other the entire fight. Right. Like when you got heavyweights dropping those bows on your head. Anyone can just turn the lights off. It's Dude, nuts. It's, I feel like John Jones, I was talking to Garrett and Jack earlier. Like, I feel like he just stalks his prey in the ring where like he was so calm the whole time. Yeah. And Stipe was getting a few shots in, but it was like, it's like he's just setting up the perfect kill. Yeah. Right. Like right. a true like you lion. You can just tell like the levels were way like yeah. John Jones was was ready to take him out. Like you're saying, kind of just like on a prey. Right. Like, Cause Stipe looked like a little stiff trying to make some of his combos or punches happen. Mm-hmm. And John Jones just looked like, yeah, you're just ready so for a moment. He's also got ready that for vibe too. Could you imagine being his opponent? Like the greatest of all time called, everyone calls him. He's the greatest fighter ever, to ever live. There's got to be a level of like, kind of like checking yourself, like a little bit more nervous when you're walking in. You're not as fluid. You're not as like confident in yourself. Yeah. It's just yeah. got to be tough. He's got that extra layer of defense. Bro, crazy. And I yeah. emptied the clip on DraftKings with John Jones because I had lost <laughs> up to that point until like football happened. I was down quite a bit for Mike Tyson. I was down. I, I put money on Chandler and I just emptied it for just a TKO or KO or a disqualification at like plus plus odds. Yeah, and thank yeah. God for that. Yeah, Man. he had a really good thing in this post fight press conference because obviously John Jones is very troubled past. Mm-hmm. And they asked him like, you know, because he lost his mom. Like, do you think your mom would be proud of of who you are today and whatever. And I love what he said. He's like, uh, you know, not proud of who I am, like, but she'd definitely be proud of who I'm becoming. He's like, you know, Damn. I'm never going to be the, like, I'm never going to be whatever. Well, like the yeah. future, like I'm always just chasing the, trying to get better every day. I was like, yeah. that shows some growth for him yeah, for sure. And just a good little lesson. Anyway, seeing he had the fame in the crowd. I saw Arthur Jones and Chandler Jones. Dude, we were standing there waiting for Mike and Arthur Jones is like getting my attention and because I'm standing next to Jelly Roll, he's and he's just like, somebody say. I'm like, you want? He's like, yeah. He's like, you can take a photo for me with him. I'm like, yeah, Jelly Roll, uh, John Jones' brother wants to take a picture with you. Jelly's like, for real? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That was an awesome time. It was awesome. I'm I'm obviously heartbroken for Mike, but couldn't have lost a better way. Give him McGregor. Yeah, give, give him McGregor. Him McGregor. Gotta he stop gets hiding. McGregor fight. Come on now. Can't miss it. Even Can't if a third kid comes. Got to get got to get Mike on every lance. Whenever he lands, like the wounds a little bit. Got to get him on the bus. Got to get him on the bus. Got to get him on the bus. Absolutely. We'll should we have, definitely jump. Should we have some no free shout outs? Yeah. Brought to us by Sport Clips. You want to hit Sport Clips? Let's talk about that? Sport Clips real quick, boys. Uh, this football season, don't walk around with helmet hair like a total rookie. You've been in the game long enough to know how to wear your how you wear your hair matters. And just because your team's mascot is Wolverine, shout out, go blue. Doesn't mean you have to look like one up top. Keep your head in the game and go to Sport Clips. Their pro stylists have mastered the X's and O's and hair so you can get a tight fade while kicking back and watching some fade routes on TV. It's called a Hail Mary, not a Hair Mary. So don't go just anywhere. Head over to pros, the pros and men's hair. They'll perfectly craft. They'll have a perfectly crafted game plan to make you look your best. No halftime adjustments needed. Remember, the difference between an okay cut and a great cut is called Sport Clips. It's a game changer. Mm. Shout out for shout out. Who wants to go first? I can go I'll first. go ahead. I'll go ahead and throw one out there. Shout ahead. out, no free shout out to Hospital Coffee. Okay. Terrible. <laughs> the worst coffee you'll ever taste. But just a reminder when you're in the trenches, it reminds you of like that gas station coffee. Like it's almost the coffee, not that you want, but the coffee you need in those mm. times. So just refilling that cup all day long and just knowing this is going to taste like shit and just embracing the shit 
was the best part. So shout out, no free shout out to Hospital Coffee. Brutal coffee. Yeah. Got to get it out there. God, that bugs me because my shout out had to do with coffee as well. Oof. Go ahead, add on my it. Coffee's co- a great. Do my, my shout out, no free shout out goes to not the coffee you want, but the coffee you need. Oh. That is... That, <laughs> <laughs> It was. It, it was revolved around us getting back so late and having the kids all day. Yeah, he's like, mine's kind of coffee too. Just say the same quote. The, same not thing. the coffee you want, but the coffee you need. Hey, do you have another one? Because we have to eat two sponsored clips. So that's. Insane. Yeah, I got a pet peeve. But uh, shout out me... for shout out to pet peeves. What's your pet peeve? Uh, shout out for shout out pet peeves right now is fucking construction, dude. Oh. Taking my kids to Our school builders. this morning. Our builders. Our builders. Oh, yeah. Just the process of building. Yeah. Dude, I was on a busy road, one lane busy road that I take my kids to school every single day. Well, when my, when I do take my kids to school and a semi truck pulls out all good. I think he's making a turn. He then faces the car in the direction like his, I'm in the right lane. He's also in the right lane, but his vehicle is facing my vehicle and decides to back up like a block and a half slowly with the beeping noises on. Where I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to be late to school already. You're making me way more late. Then he wants to do the Austin Powers 15-point turn just to get into this this lane. So that shit pissed me off. So shout out that driver in construction. Yeah. Shout out that pet peeve. Shout out that pet peeve. Fuck. But yeah, man. Also, shout out the coffee you need, not the coffee you want. (laughs) Do you actually say that quote? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for real? I like zoned out. I just heard you talk about coffee and I started like dying to myself. Like, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Sure, what you got, big dog? Um, my shout out, no free shout out, goes to my wife, Jilly Bean. It is our one year anniversary. Let's go, babe. Today. Congratulations, man. And uh just a huge shout out to her for putting up with me. That's really it. All right. I love that, man. All right. Yeah. Hey, shout out love. Hey, shout, shout out love. love. She Jilly Jilly Bean, shout out Jilly Bean. She puts up with Sherm so much that Jer- that Sherm is doing a staycation today. <laughs> today and he texted me he's like hey you mind if i show up on tuesday at like noon and i was like sure i, I mean i guess because he called me he's like hey i'm gonna do this staycation like an anniversary i'm like on a monday like in the middle of the hell week. yeah sure uh, but i'm like yeah, bro, dude, 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 yeah, yeah. do what you gotta do do what you gotta do she I'm works the weekends she's a nurse you know we're trying I, I owe her a weekend trip i really do sounds like you owe her you know, I we're owe big. Her. I were big. So we're working within parameters, but we'll be staying at the Noel. Shout out, no free shout out. Mm, yeah, tonight. nice, man. It'll be nice. Get a little steak dinner. Yeah. Ooh. A couple right. of rose petals Cut on the up. floor. Oh, yeah. All oh, right. Already got the- Take that once a week shower. The hydrangeas and roses. <laughs> I made a little bouquet. Okay. Bouquet. Bouquet. Whatever bouquet. you want to call it, man. Her favorite flowers. Hell it's been yeah. good so far. All right. It's a paper anniversary. All right, all right. The first one. Yeah, every anniversary there's like a theme. There's like a like yeah, a theme. That's the best way I can explain it. Yeah. Like the first one is like paper. So I want to say my uh first gift to Charles was like um uh, a bill. I don't need I don't even I had uh our song was uh Diamonds Are Twine by Ryan Hurd at our wedding. So I had Ryan Hurd like I write out the lyrics to that song on paper. That's a to, like hang up and gift. give to her. For pay, yeah. good but every year there's a theme. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a really cool gift. Let's <laughs> damn. Get uh, that Mitch, going. what you got for your shout out? No free shout out. I need to get that up. Uh, my shout out, no free shout out. It is getting closer to holiday se- holiday season, and this is where this one really picks up. It's your grandmother's cooking. Ooh. There's just something about like mm-hmm. them. One, it's always so much better than most other food but the two i think what makes it better is that it's coming from your grandmother and one thing that my mom always makes like it's like uh christmas eve like breakfast or whatever she the french toast that she makes Ooh. is the best french toast best french toast i have ever had in my life oh. and there is nothing it just means more coming from your grandmother so <laughs> shout out shout out grandmother's cooking let's go mitch let's go what good shout out grandma? i call i call my my mom's side is mama and pop up, and then my dad's side is Grammy and pop up. So, oh, two pop ups, two, two pop ups, two, two pop ups. Interesting. All right, all right, all right, Jack. Pop up. Um, I feel like 
growing up, whether it's in school or it's in like the new stages of a relationship, there's always the question that's like, what's your favorite food? And me personally, I've never been able to answer it like truthfully because really? I feel like it's going to truly affect the rest of my life. Like if I say, you know, Chinese or, or Italian, that answer, I'm not going to be able to eat whatever the other answer could be. But I had a moment a few months ago in the car and it's like eureka moment when I'm driving by myself and I realize it's sandwiches. And so my shout out goes to just sandwiches in general, man. They're so versatile. And every every uh, culture has their own take on Call one. Back. And I know we've we've done, we've talked about this before. You, but ne- you can never shout out sandwiches. It was, day, it was the day after uh, the case race when I was hung over. Yeah. Oh, and I got my first pub sub, and I was like, "Shout out sandwiches, dude!" Dude, it's there. It's just I'll shout out sandwiches every day of the week, and I truly think I could eat sandwiches every day for the rest of my life. But I'm not gonna get it for lunch today, so it almost feels like stolen valor. But <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna get a sandwich at some point in the next 48 hours. But yeah, shout out sandwiches. A lot, a lot of things could be my shout out after the weekend, but I will give my shout out, no free shout out to famous people that exceed your expectations of meeting them. I don't know who that was. Oh, okay. Who'd Go you ahead. say? No, no, no. I want to hear yours first. Mine was Sage Steele. Oh, yeah. Because I was, we grew up watching Sage Steele on ESPN. Like She's a staple of the childhood sports fan. And I've always seen her like content things that she looks like really nice. And she's like, I don't know, super, uh, super warm person. And I was sitting next to her at the fight and it was like, I felt like we were, we walked away and she would tell somebody like, yeah, me and JP are friends. She's watching the fight. Like big things are happening. She's like putting her, her arm on my shoulder. Like, Oh my gosh. Like asking me questions. Like what's happening here. We were just having like the best time. And I'm like, man, this is Sage Steele. And I truly feel like I'm one of her friends. And it was one of my best encounters with a, a famous person I've ever had. Dude, Sage That's is awesome. awesome. Yeah. She brought her dad too. First UFC fight he's ever been to. Nice. He and was, he was the OG. Yeah. Like there was a war going on in one of the fights. And they're like, well, you know, what do you think of it so far? He's like, seems a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> Beast. No, nah, she's awesome, dude. She's She'd be awesome. awesome to get on the bus. Yeah. She'd be she awesome. would for sure come on. Yeah. Well, mine's going to be not as hype as that, but shout out to those crisp mornings we've been having and it's a little wet out and the leaves are kind of vibrant because they're a little dewy, but that with a little morning coffee walk has been real nice lately. Damn, bro. That's a hell of a shout out. What are you talking about? about? Yeah. Lulled us to sleep. Calling it back with the coffee. Calling it back. The mornings have been great, bro. Yeah. Trey? I can do. I'm kind of getting the hang of like what y'all are doing here as you go around. Um, shout out actual competitive fantasy football leagues when there's no money involved. Yeah. Okay. There right. you go, Dre. I nice have a, work. I have, a, I have a fantasy football league where there is not a penny involved. There hasn't been for the four years that we've had it. But we are in the group talk. We are in the group chat talking smack every single day. We're putting it on each other. I mean, it's like it's no one ever leaves their lineups not filled. No one forgets to switch players out. It's intense. Um, can I shout out my guys real quick in the fantasy? Shout them out, chat. bro. All right, hold shout on. Yes, out. let's go. They're gonna they're gonna freak out. They don't even know I'm here. Um, all right, Austin, Brady, Chris, Dom, Evan, Jordan, Javon, Kevin, Logan, Misael, and my brother Seth. Shout 12 out the man boys, league. man. Twelve man league. I'm seven and four right now. Second in the league, looking good. So yeah, shout out actual competitive fantasy football leagues with no money involved. Love that. Great shout out. Oh, we got to stay on that topic. <laughs> What's going on? Because Jack didn't set his lineup this week and has scored 25 points. And it's going to keep me in last place Blonde when I won my game. Blonde G's going to go crazy. Blonde did you know? Of course. No, he didn't. He doesn't care about this league since he did Jack, that weird shit fuck? with Taylor whoa, whoa, last year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, this feels emotional. It is bro. emotional. If you didn't I set your lineup, that means you don't care about our league. No, there's I, five I, players I with zero points. They, there's a strategy involved. There's 25 five points five. total. He's, G1 is still going to be last in the league right now. It's bullshit, dude. There should be a punishment for 25 points. For a heady play? I'll take a trophy. Dude told us he didn't even look at the app. That's bullshit. Fuck, Jack. That's wild. That is crazy, Jack. I mean, I'm still, I think, fifth in the league or sixth in the league. Jack, I even look at my lineup. I'm like the most inconsistent person. You're having a good year. Eight and two. You're having a good year. I actually got dummied. Yeah, Yeah, I got dummied by Delaney. Dummied. Battling, bro. Scrap should take care of it. 
I'm in there like every Tuesday night, ready to you know, search in the waiver wire. What can we do here? Yeah. yeah. It's probably going to be fucking me because of Jack. God damn. That's so lame. I, and I Fun think Jack. outside of the playoff, there's going to be like a, a loser's bracket. It doesn't matter. Though, it's right? just whoever's yeah. the lowest in the league, the worst record. But I think somebody will be battling for those last two places. Like they will have a game. Yeah, it's me and Jared. <laughs> who Jack could have handled this week. That's crazy. Oh, Jack. That is crazy, Jack. 25 points. Mm. Wah, wah, wah. Mm. <laughs> Just means more to some. I can't wait to see G1 here. I can't wait to see SEC out of the playoff. Damn. Tennessee gone. Oh, wow. Okay, it's getting personal. It is. Because <laughs> right. Tennessee I'm, I'm gone. Holy shit. Holy Bro, shit. You going to let him say some shit like that, Jack? He's hurting. I hurt people hurt people. We said this earlier. Yeah, but Bama's looking kind of nice. Yeah, I'm worried about me. Are you a Bama fan? I'm just I'm just saying what uh, what the realities are. I wonder if I play you next week. Let's see. Are you talking about a fantasy? No, I play Coop. Oh. JP, uh, switching subjects just a little bit. Would you say that New York Bagels might be a little bit overrated? Yeah. Based off our experience. Oh, no. Experience is. <laughs> we had multiple bagels. We did. Experience says. Because we, we hit that one be. spot when we were out in New York. Um, he was doing oh, bars yeah, or something. yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We're it was, it we was were, all right. We they were just one piece. Each place was one piece away. Yeah. And really, yeah. it was just cream, which it was kind of our fault. No, dude. The all bagel sandwiches <laughs> should come with cream cheese on it. That's their fault. I know, but we could, I mean, yeah, we could have specified it, but proper bagel. Proper bagel. Creef Hall is, bagel. Number one. I gotta hey, try an- another bagel. good one. Oh, what's it called? Not Bernie's. It's something over by Brugers. Benji's. Brugers. <laughs> you know, I feel like it was changed. No, no, no. You heard of Einstein? No, not Brugers. But the the Western from Brugers is nice. But yeah, Benji's, bro. And JP, that's over. That's over in West Nashville. Yeah. You, oh, I need you, to try you have that. to take sit and go over. Check yeah. out Benji's, bro. Mm. They got some good ones. They have some yeah. good ones. It kind of competes with proper. proper. Proper's got more range, more variety. You need I know Proper's Paul. got some good ones. The amount of cream cheese Proper Bagel puts on their bagel is just so elite to me. I love You'll it. You'll like Benji's, brother. Really? It's yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they got that thing stacked in there. It's stacked. All right. You'd love it. All right. Just All not right. as not, not, not as much variety. I would yeah. still give the edge of Proper Bagel, but off the beaten path that you're not going to sit there. I mean, sometimes depending on when you get in line. But Benji's is kind of like West Nashville. You get in there. It's it's you'll, You like it. I'll you like it. That. Is that the place by the old church? Uh, yeah. Place. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You go down that. Yeah. There was one the day. I think oh. we came back from Chicago, and I was like, I need a bagel. And then I went to Proper Bagel. Line was too long. I even stopped at Brugger, and they're like, we're all only of us plain bagels. I was like, I'm not getting a fucking plain <laughs> bagel. Fucking Brugger, but so. I found my way out there, and that line was crazy long too. So I kind of just gave up on it bagels. Kinda, yeah, I was gonna say it kind of does depend. But I did. This. They have like the bait little like window where you can see them making bagels in the back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta go there. I gotta check that spot out. All right. We got twisted, twisted question. We got tear talk. Let's do twist, twisted question. The twisted question is brought to us by twisted tea. Twisted tea is a refreshing hard iced tea made with real brew tea and five percent alcohol, full of flavor and very refreshing. Goes down smooth because there is zero carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. It feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is the perfect alcohol beverage for game day, whether you're tailgating in the parking lot, watching at a bar, or watching with the boys at home. Twisted tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted with the boys and grab a refreshing twisted tea today with this twisted question we got some tear talk who wants to hit it i got it all right twisted question this week would you rather never be able to have food on thanksgiving ever again or never receive a gift on christmas again <sighs> never received a gift on christmas again same and i didn't think i'd be like that but Younger, really? young, younger Will probably says Thanksgiving Same. without thinking about but it. But the having kids, I think, changes it up because you get more excited about giving the gift to your kid than you do receiving the gift. Right. And, and anybody now, like your wife or your parents or anybody in your family, that's like, hey, what, what's something you might want for Christmas? It's kind of like, dude, I don't know. You don't have to yeah. give me shit. We don't have to do this. Yeah, this you don't have to do it's that. It's all good. Don't waste yeah. your money. Yeah. It's all good. But the, with the Thanksgiving, I, for whatever reason, this year, am more hyped up about Thanksgiving than ever before. Bro, Thanksgiving, especially as you get older, you just, those moments, the the family vibes, the friends vibe, the friends the gratitude that happen, the gratitude, yeah, bro. You just, you truly can't be Thanksgiving. And although it's like you could still have Thanksgiving and not eat the food, the food is. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Out of body experience yeah. for Compton right there. Huh? It has no words. God, it's heartbreaking that the Comptons aren't going to be able to make it this year. 
I know. But we'll be, we'll, I mean, spirit. Yeah, spirit. We'll, we'll be, be there in spirit. spirit. Absolutely. They'll be making their way out, meeting, meeting old Scotty Joe Lee for the first time. <sighs> Cute Scotty child, by Joe. the way. Thank you. Cute Thank child. You. That's what my seed does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you boys? We doing Thanksgiving or we, uh, or no gifts? I would have to do no gifts. I just love Thanksgiving dinners way too much. And I, I love being able to like sit down, catch up with family. If you're watching all that go down and you can't eat, that's crazy. I just can't do it. And the, is like, anybody on the would rather never be able to have food on Thanksgiving? I, JP, I think you're in really? a you're, you're in a unique spot, but I, you I, could I you could say no Love gifts for Christmas because it's also your birthday, so you'd still get birthday gifts. My explanation, I, I am I would rather not eat Thanksgiving, which pains me to even think of, but. Sandwich. You get sandwiches. Yeah, sandwich. you know, I'm sandwiches. I'm eating the sandwich, obviously. But there is kind of a Thanksgiving esque dinner sometimes on Christmases. Fair. So maybe you can push it. But like, I just have this like childlike memory of that feeling of like presence under the tree. There's like, when you're a kid, I know like it's not like a big deal anymore when you grow up, but that like sense of wonder where it's like, what's it going to be? Is it going to be a PlayStation or like a new bike or something? And it's like, oh, very that, fair. That's like a in itself so I'm, I'm banking on that Christmas dinner even though my family's not like a Christmas dinner family so if anyone's having Christmas dinner let me know so Got you. hit your boy up but yeah God, Thanksgiving is so elite though and it's just like a day of pure relaxation you got there's, football there's on, no expectation or no pressure of yes. giving it's yes. just giving gratitude yeah you got NFL NBA on I mean it's man I, hey, I'm with you if I was 15 or younger probably be in the same boat but just being at the age we are, it's like the gifts aren't that big of a deal anymore. That food. And you could still have, like you were saying, a Thanksgiving-esque mm -hmm. Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still have games on because obviously we're going to have some uh, NFL on on Christmas now. That'd be nice. Shout yeah, out Netflix. Nice. Don't be shout out. Christmas. Yeah. I'm coming over. Yo. Yeah, I, it's a tough spot for me. My birthday's on Christmas, so it kind of depends on the rules of like no gifts on Christmas. True, Does that like truly mean? It's Christmas Day. You cannot receive gifts of any sort. Is that a parameter? I think you're in such a spot that it's so easy for you to just say no gifts on Christmas because you're going to get gifts for your birthday. Yeah. yeah. You, have a, you have the easiest but on Christmas. question ever. Yeah, it's but it's Christmas. also on your birthday. Yeah, let's say you don't get any gifts on Christmas. On the 25th. Mm -hmm. I would... <laughs> would you change your answer? Mm -hmm. No? I would. Dude, I mean, like, because like Jack's saying, as a kid... The Christmas birthday combo. See, I think I, I, I view that as like a negative, right? I, I do too. When I you're, like you get no, fucked. trust me, like you're, when you're young, you don't. But when middle school, yeah. I think I've told y'all before, my dad literally, we he got the left and right socks, the Nike Elite socks, and he wrapped them separately. One said Happy Birthday, one said Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> one pair of socks. <laughs> so you know what? Screw the gifts. <laughs> I want the meal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's so easy for people like an aunt. To be like, hey, here's your birthday Christmas gift. How about this? Would you rather be able to have zero food on Thanksgiving or no birthday? Zero food on Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah, just something about it all being about you that day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, okay, that, yeah. that checks, that checks. <laughs> it's nice. You get the calls, you get the texts. Yeah. People send you a couple of gifts here and there. It's nice. I would choose the other one because I already people will text me and they say, Merry Christmas, bro. Have a good day. Hey, Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so I think I will I'll take Thanksgiving over my birthday. Yeah, same. To me, it's like the birthday is just like a day. It's just like another day, and you get all the I, I do love it. Like I enjoy when people are like happy birthday and everything else, but it's like I could do without I could do without birthday. Oh man. I love it. But party in it? No, I, I low-key feel like birthdays could be somewhat overrated sometimes because if I like for my birthday, I want to spend time with the people I want to spend it with. And then those people say they're busy or like they have other plans. Like this is why I I just get let down by people. So I'm like, I don't know. Oh, that's kind of sad. Yeah. Damn, man. Yeah. See, I feel like with birthday, like it come from me, grumpy will. It's almost like there's an expectation to do something on your birthday. And I'm like, here's what I want to do. I want to do nothing. <laughs> Well, I mean, like see, I, I view it the exact opposite. I view birthdays as like it's truly whatever I want to do today. I like, can do something or I can do nothing, but it's my choice. Oh, I know, but people still like want to do stuff for you. It's like, just give me a game controller and just leave me alone. 
Mexico. Like this past year for my birthday. Like to, the first time, to... the first birthday that Charo and I experienced where it was my birthday and she's like, what do you want to do? What do you, you want me to, we were in football season. Like that's another thing. Fo our, my birthday was always on football season. So it's kind of like, you're not thinking of it that much anyway. But I was just like, yo, just cook me some, some chili and peanut butter sandwiches. Awesome. She's like, do you want to invite anybody over? I'm like, I don't know. It's all good. I need to do that. Yeah. Having a, having a, uh, a fall birthday be tough. Yeah. Mine yeah. was, uh, it usually <laughs> always fell on the last day of school for Alito oh, public schools or for Texas public schools. That's so high. May 24th. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. So it was like a end of the year party slash Sherman's birthday party. Everybody's stoked. It was fun, dude. Yeah. It's a good birthday. Birthdays, man. Love them. You got a good birthday, dude, too. So cool. All right, tear talk. Yeah, let's do some tear talk. A little tear talk for the squad. Tear talk today is going to be best football player names, fictional or real. Oh, I'm excited. You want to go first or second, Willie? I'm ready. I'm ready if you want me to go. Do any of you guys have a list? All good if not. We could just give some like shout outs. Yeah. I'll go second. I'll go second. I'll go okay, second. Okay, okay. I have two honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is going to go to Billy Bob. Just the character himself in Varsity Blues. Love that. I think he's fantastic. He's awesome. Him. Give him a, I'll give it a 10, a fucking 10. The whole concussion thing. It's awesome. Uh, another one. Michigan boy. Eddie McDoom. Ooh. running back back in the day in the 70s. I just thought that was a fun name and a little tip of the cap to the University of Michigan. My tier three is going to go to Storm Duck, okay. who is a real cornerback mm -hmm. for the Miami Dolphins. I actually didn't know that, but then I started Googling the uh, tier talk. I thought, well, that's a fun name. That's exciting. My tier two, maybe the greatest player to ever play at the University of Alabama, Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh. my tier two and then finally my tier three uh my tier one dick lane speaks for itself yeah all all real names except for scum and billy bob decent epic straightforward one word to describe mid oh. <laughs> tough All right. Hold on. Oh, sorry, Two sorry. more people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Disappointing. Kind of. Rushed. Okay. <laughs> wow. JP threw three, three <laughs> words in there. Yeah. Disappointing, kind of, rushed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> man. All right, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have three honorable mentions. <laughs> I think you got to go Shane Falco. You got to go Willie Beeman. Man, this is a battle right here. I'm gonna go. My third honorable mention is Dick Butkus. I think Dick oh. Butkus is a better than like a Dick Lane. It's like Dick Butkus. Like, I mean, a legend, bro. Yeah, Dick Butt. You just got kissed by the butt, dude. He just fucked you. Dick <laughs> fucked you. Obviously, you can do that with Dick Lane, but not the butt kiss. Um, but not the butt kiss. My tier three is going to be Air Bud. You want to hear about his legacy? Five rushes, 210 yards, and four touchdowns. Seven receptions, 405 yards, seven TDs. He scored every time he caught the ball. And on defense, two solo tackles with one forced fumble, and he took that one to the crib. So my tier three is going to go to Air Bud. My tier two, a teammate of mine, played at Georgia, safety, Bakari Rambo. I thought... When he got drafted, I think it was in the fourth round, the most badass name, one of the more badass names you're going to come across, Bakari Rambo. And my tier one, there's an award named after him, but it's Bronco Nagurski. You got a name, Bronco Nagurski, playing football. This was a fullback and a D tackle. You, I mean, football, football bro. Mm. Bronco Nagurski. That's my tier talk. Retriever. JP said it, but football. Tough. Good tough. Just so I don't show favoritism, mid. Oh, oh okay. Trey, you got to have some authenticity. Yeah, you got to have some balls on if this bus. You liked one better than the other. No, you got to have some balls on this bus, Trey. Give it back. No, give it back to Trey. I was going to say dick. Dick. Oh, Trey. Some authenticity, Trey. Forget the balls. Have some dick. Air Bud. Okay. 
fucking eight. Stat padding. But. <laughs> mm. But is butt positive or butt, butt negative? Butt positive. Butt, butt positive. positive. Yeah, yeah positive, positive butt. butt. Love me some butt. Sure, we've got a list. I got one. All right, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a list, man. three guys pretty good off the In the same time as Rambo almost. Bakari? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is Ha Ha on it? Ooh. That's a good. Kool-Aid? Yeah. yeah, that's a cool one. Uh, My tier three, Warren Moon. Tier two, Noel Divine. Tier one, General Booty. JP, what were yours? Go ahead. Pass it to JP. Ass. <laughs> we doing that one word? No, just oh. JP, you go. <laughs> Nine, they all three pl- kind of played around the same time. Rainbow's was a little bit after, but Captain Munderlin, Major Wright, and Bakari Rambo. All SEC guys. Yeah, Major Wright. He was Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he played at the same time as Captain Munderlin at South Carolina. And they were both in the secondary. And it's like Captain Munderland versus Major Wright. I'm like, God, Bakari Rambo. Bakari Rambo. Dude, yeah, sick names to have. Uh, a shout out to South Carolina, Rocket Sanders. It's yeah. been one of my favorite this year. And I got to shout out the bounce scale, Squirrel White on Tennessee. So mm, there you go. Squirrel's a good name. Squirrel's a fun name. JP, you got to be feeling solid with uh, South Carolina. I know we was kind of talking mostly college football playoff, but. You got anything you want to say to the Gamecock fans as the as the, the microphone for the fan base? Expand the playoff. <laughs> Fourteen teams, I believe. We'll probably if we beat Clemson, we'll probably land maybe one spot behind Tennessee. And yeah, expand it. Everyone wins if we expand it. And Shane Beamer has built everyone wins. Has built a program. I feel confident saying that what we did in the portal was impressive <clears throat> because we took guys, not high value NIL guys, took guys from North Carolina. A and T took guys from Pitt. All these guys that like were just coached up and developed, mm-hmm. and that's where I think Beamer will stand out in the NIL era is the development of the players. Mm. So the future is bright, and I said this yesterday. Clem- strength, staff. strength staff: Luke Day, Austin Winfrey. We're, we've never been bigger. We've never been stronger, which is true. So shout out to them. But Clemson, that game is everything on the the tone of our season. And we've seen how Clemson is trending. Yeah, They're trending down. And I was say, saying this on Sunday with somebody. I said, right now the coffin is open in Clemson. And we need – South Carolina needs to be the ones to close it. And we got six guys to carry it and put them in the, put them in the cemetery, oh! not in the dirt. <laughs> but, yeah, the, 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 the coffin is open in Clemson. They now – I know that's one, yeah. Nothing worse than whooping up on a team in the AM. <laughs> in the AM. <laughs> All right, boys, we feel good? Yeah, yeah fun episode. Did we do with us? I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah we'll do we, with we, 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 we that. smacked them. If we you're, smacked still, you're still with us right now, we got a Smack stream yes. tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Cent- tomorrow. Oh, or today. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Tuesday. So today, if you're seeing this on Tuesday, oh, yeah, yeah, 1 p.m. Central Time, locker room comes out. 6 a.m. on Thursday. Rumors swirling about Wednesday nights. But right now, it is Thursday at 6 a.m. Appreciate you guys. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Anything, Will? No, sir. That was, that was beautiful. All right. Great all right, episode. All right. Great, Great episode, episode, guys. Vibes in the all chat. Right. Vibes in the chat. I'll see you, boys. <laughs>